it's a pretty good shot he should play. It's not, it's not bad, it still leaves him with a tough hoop. And it's a pressure hoop, because if he misses, then that gives a full for a seven yarder for a break. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, is, I, I don't think that hit much of the hoop. Maybe we can get a replay, but that no, was not very close. To inside wire. Let's see. So, yeah. in the middle of the left hand wire, yeah. a replay for, sorry, a. Uh, Lifeline for Rob there. Yeah, yeah. Going going around third turn. It's one of those things where you have to be shooting well. You have to play a number of good shots. But if you mess up or make a mistake, it quite often does give your opposition a seven to ten yarder for a break. Um, so it's one of those things where it's. Uh, um, it's one of those things where, sure, if it comes off all well and good and you're around third turn and your opposition has to hit and if you potentially leave a three ducks leave then um, then that's a standard triple which you know at this level you're, de you're definitely looking at looking to finish as it happens Rob's got the ball in hand obviously so yeah, he's contemplating whether or not to line up the double <laughs> double with blue and black yeah we've got a good angle of that actually on the stream here um, definitely yeah, lining up the double. Is that necessary? It's a six yarder. Couldn't he just hit it? Uh, that's all about percentages, right? So I think he's going to decide that he just wants to not. Uh, I've uh, just hit the, hit the blue roll. Yeah, don't don't do anything <coughs> silly. Yeah. He might even have a triple between the hoop, mm. the ball, hoop, <laughs> black, blue. <laughs> I, I don't that. think he's going to be going for the hoop. I don't know if he, you know, he. Could shank it and run the hoop, and then and run then it by like two yards then and then hit blue. No, hit blue, maybe, you know. Mm, unlikely. I think he's just going to just hit blue, right? You'd hope so. I feel as though, for me, if I was aiming up a double, then I'd sort of lose a little bit of concentration. I'd just prefer to aim at the blue and just hit the blue. You maintain your focus, and you're more likely to hit it, I think. Yeah, sharp. Yeah, in the middle. Interesting enough, I was, chat I was chatting to James Deeth about this yesterday, uh, yesterday, and he made a comment that. He's always, he doesn't mind lining up the double. He's still going to aim at the ball, the closest ball. But yeah. with a double, he knows you know if he misses, it's just generally on the right side. So yeah, you know, instead of aiming in the middle, aim at one ball. And if you know you miss to one side most of the time, of course. Um. So now we're fully expecting Rob to get going here and. This should be should be a ball break to fall back. back. Yeah, it should be a break to fall back. So he's going to look to <clears throat> take off behind red, rush it closer to black, play a nice little stop shot, loading hoop two, That's and short. going to. Was that just? No, he's all right. Is okay there? Yeah, it's more than all right. I felt as though that was going to go a yard further. Than that. I mean, even if he even if he played it short, like it was short, and he ended up round hoop four. It's still a reasonable, reasonably easy Kroger stroke mm -hmm. to load to and get a rush on. Sure. Black. That's definitely, that lawn is definitely slower than what we saw the last yeah. few days. That red pulled up drastically. Yeah. So what does that do? If the if the lawn's gradually slowing down, which is bound to in, in, this, in yeah. this amount of rain, but who do you think that favours? Whoever's on the lawn. Because if, if, so if, Rob, if Fulford gets the player's turn in the rain, yeah. As the lawns gradually slow down, it's going to affect Tom more if he hits him. Because then if he hits, he potentially hasn't played for 25, 30 minutes, and it might have slowed down more significantly yeah. in that time. Do you not think long term this rain might be an advantage for Tom? With he obviously has quite a lot more power than Rob. So if it really were to come down for the next two or three hours, then I think if eventually some shots might be if there's if there's actual. If there's actually like puddles on the lawn, then mm -hmm. they're just going to stop playing. Yeah, so, hope so at that point, you know, he, he can't line this up. But the the red is not going towards the hoop. He couldn't quite get the uh, line because the hoop was in the way. So it's not ideal, but I think he'll it's still be fine. Because it's like once once you've got all four balls together, then you know you load three with black, get a rush on blue, nice and close to red, and then you end up with like a one foot rush to hoop two. Yeah. So. <clears throat> How's that? Uh, it's not straight at the hoop, but he should be fairly comfortable getting this to a confident distance to get going. 
Just a nice little short takeoff. What do you think? What, where would you be? How far back would your aim be here? He's not going to play a turco, he's going to play proper croquet stroke. Yeah, it's not too hard. No. Where would you be trying to get to? Um, I'd two feet? Two feet in front, for sure. And just guaranteeing me running it. Yeah, so that's yeah. two and a half and, and a slight angle. This yeah. is this isn't pretty. It's probably not the shot he wants to take on. No. Generally speaking, when you're you know a play of like full foot level, you get so used to not having to play long hoops yeah. that when you end up with a long hoop, which is he's played hoop a good shot. hoop shot here, but you get to the point where that kind of hoop shot it's a little it's a little scary because mm. you just <clears throat> you don't end up ever playing them. Yeah. That should be a good confidence booster for Rumbling because I had heard that there were some slight errors and mistakes earlier on this morning. So, well, so, you, so. yesterday in our first game, Fulford <coughs> missed two hoops. So, and <coughs> potentially that's because you know from quarterfinals onwards, onwards we've changed to quadways, which has maybe made the hoops maybe fifteen percent harder. And the balls tend to stick a little bit more and take when they collect wire, they tend to lose a lot more energy. Mm -hmm. um, Unless, of course, you're just a very good GC player and you're just used to running three foot hoops. <laughs> yeah. Four foot hoops mid break. Easy. No sweat. Only four? That seems like a pretty comfortable distance, <laughs> to be fair. I'm trying to run that with control. Yeah. <laughs> 40 yards. Yeah, I like that. Right, so he looks good now. Yeah, it's a good one. Mm. Cool. He would have liked to have Blake a little bit closer. But yeah. From the distance he was playing the croquet stroke again. The, ru the rush on boot was probably more critical because then now, like I said earlier, now he gets to maybe stop shot blue closer to the peg or even closer to hoop six and then end up with like a one foot, two foot rush to to hoop two. Yeah. I think this is one of the, this is one of the important skills for players maybe who are getting to the point where they begin to understand the basics of how to like play a full break. You know, you go to your pivot, you play like a half roll, you know, you go to your pivot and then you take off. But actually, you can start to actually move your pivot around more and actually look to make the rushes to hoops like a more guaranteed short shot. So, here after this hoop, Rob, Robert's probably going to look to croquet red down to hoop four, getting a rush on blue, and then rush blue relatively close to black. So then if he's doing a takeoff, it's three yards rather than you know, five to six, so he's more guaranteed to have a, a mm -hmm. two foot rush. You run that hard, surprising or? No, I think because if he, you know, last game, if Fulf has made a couple mistakes, if he ends up with a slightly long hoop, he's going to just look to, if he doesn't have to run it softly yeah. with control, he's probably just going to force it for just, him. just guarantee, just guarantee yeah. the hoop. <clears throat> There's mm -hmm. no, yeah, rather than forcing himself to have to play a good shot, which is, he's, I mean, from that distance, he's fully capable of playing a nice yeah. controlled hoop, but. He's left himself a nice four yarder here, which most probably wouldn't fancy, but I'm sure he should be fine. <clears throat> I'd probably fall over on this, to be honest. <laughs> oh, he backed off there. I wouldn't say he's second guessing it, just making sure. No, that was just sure. a, he didn't like it. That, but that was he was getting ready to play and pulled yeah. out. It's, it's interesting watching Fulford's technique because he's very much a two, two cast hit. Yeah. And then yeah, if he doesn't like it, he just yeah steps back and does it again. But it's, it's the way he hits it. You know, it's two cast hit. Um, some players I think spend more time like a, like aiming with their cast and therefore. Like have a ver a varying you know amount. Sure. I mean, I know my casting could be anywhere from three to I don't know eight. Mm. It's interesting because if I'm playing GC, it's three every time. But in AC, if I'm hitting it, it could be more. It's just to be. Yeah. It's it's almost I, for me. It's just whatever feels comfortable. I think that's the same for a lot of players. What yeah. you. Once you start to feel comfortable in what you're doing, then you can pull the trigger. But yeah. Right, he's got this well under control now. Keeps getting his rush on his pivot, which the purists really like. Huh? I'd be stressing out here because I've just rushed um, my pioneer to a yard, yard in front of the hoop. I can just <laughs> run the hoop now. Run the hoop. <laughs> yeah. But I don't think Rob will be doing that. No. Nah. 
Yeah, so he's opted to send it down to... Yeah, send it down to hoop four. Um, obviously Is that just because red wasn't Red's just perfect. not, yeah, red's like, what, looks like it's what, three, four yards away? Three yeah. yards away, so blue's like a yard in front. Um, it's not, like in these conditions, it's not always essential to look to have a like perfect um, pioneers, but the moment you start playing like lawns that are um, that are a little bit more difficult, a little bit like the lawns are inconsistently paced, a bit more hills, um, sending like two pioneers if one isn't good enough is yep. you know, a way of guaranteeing that you're going to actually continue on the break. And, mm -hmm. and it's also for Robert being a bit of a perfectionist, you know, if, if one's not perfect, and it just means that none of the shots he's going to be playing are remotely difficult exactly correct? yeah 100% yeah, just trying to avoid any kind of difficulty especially in the semi-final of the world championship you just want to be playing easy shots all day there uh, yeah 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 and I think that's quite often the big I think it's a big difference between the likes of you know someone who's like, like for, you know a top a top three player in the world and maybe a top 15 or a top 20 player um, is you know, I know in a I know in a break I could easily end up with a two yard or any point. And yeah. Sure. Okay. I could. I'll hit them most of the time. Um, but it's those little things. It's those little sort of situations you get into that will affect the break. You know, maybe maybe it might only make it like ten percent less likely to you know complete your turn. Um, but you know, over the course of maybe doing you know thirty for, over the course of a tournament, that's going to result in you know maybe an extra one to two errors, and that could be the difference between. Mm -hmm. You know, um, qualifying for a knockout or winning a quarter final or winning a semi final, yeah. you know, even winning the tournament. So, it's just keeping it very tight at all times. And I mean, you have, you have to assume that's how he's won this tournament in the past. You're not going to yeah. win the tournament without playing breaks with as much control as this. Yeah. Do you know what is it tending, intending to do here, Yon? Well, You know, Logan, I'm not, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, interesting enough, he's looking to... So he's getting a rush for, over, you know, blue over to... Yeah. Over, you know, what, west boundary. Um, yeah, south boundary, west boundary. Um, Presumably it's something to do with his leave. Yeah, he's looking to pop yeah, black Yeah, I, I assume so. Yeah, he's looking to block, pop black through hoop one. And then try and get Potentially Tom to shoot with his blue ball, or...? Doesn't care. Yeah, he wants him to shoot with uh, shoot with the so blue ball. Pop the black and then yeah, get, force him to shoot with the blue somehow. Yeah. So I'm intrigued to see how. We'll, yeah, he potentially might just leave a in the cell because then if he puts <clears throat> if he puts blue, you know, over beside the west boundary and he takes black to four uh, three back, then if Tom plays with the ball that he wants to play with, which will be sorry, it's the other way around. Sorry, takes blue. Yeah. Puts black over on the west boundary because Tom will want to play with black first, first break. Then, um, if Tom misses, then it will give Fulford a nice, easy stand. Well, an opportunity for a standard triple. And for people that may not know, do you want to just explain why you may want to do a pop? Um, so or essentially, two? yeah, two, a two would be. Mm -hmm. Two is preferred. One, one, depending on the leave you're setting, is fine. Um, so essentially, it makes if Tom, yeah, he was looking to peel with a bit of angle. Yeah. And the moment you're peeling with any pop, you know, peeling with any form of angle, there's a bit of pull, and sometimes if there's enough angle, it's just like stabbing mm. in the dark. You just just caught the inside of the near wire. Uh, but yeah, so the the pop reason. Essentially, it means if Tom hits, so if Tom plays with the ball, that. Fulford wants him to, he's, and he hits, he'll go round, but then the ball, eventually, the goal for Fulford is that Tom will end up four back and three, and from that position it's much harder to complete a triple peel, but it's much harder to complete a standard TP, so mm -hmm. he could potentially be forced to try and be peeling four back, going to one back, going to two back, like, which are much harder lines of play than peeling Fall back after three, you're going to six. So, if Fulf is just looking to force Tom into having to play, having to complete a delayed TP, to you know, assuming he hits, so complete yeah. a delayed TP, which I, I'd like to think it probably a good like 
thirty, 40% more difficult than a standard yeah. TP. Standard okay. TPs, are, especially in these conditions, are just it's like a, it's like a yeah. football break, basically. Good, yeah. And how much focus is he going to put on getting these pops? I mean, will he ever risk uh, risk the pops to the detriment of his break? Or if, if we see it starts to get a bit out of control, like I think that's just going to roll into the yeah. black. So he's not going to get a rush on it. Is this starting to get a bit ropey, or will he just continue? I think we'll, this this shot will sort of tell. Okay. Because he's still got the option. Now it's he's given less time to pull a leave out, but he's still got the option of like peeling one after two back, or even going up, going to, or even going to one back. But the issue here, the issue is right here is blue, is. You know, a good four yards away from hoop six. Yeah, so it's not perfect. Reds three yards away from one bit. More, back. more, and yeah. it's not on the not not in the circle either. No, nah. so yeah, the square, sorry, rectangle. Yeah. At this level, it's quite. Cri I think popping is quite critical mm -hmm. because it can adjust the percentages, you know, ever so slightly. Um, Hugely. And yeah. even watching like Fletcher v Reva yesterday, I think Jose had a. Um, delay triple to win the second, uh, the fourth game, which he ended up breaking down on. Whereas if that was a standard TP, he'd probably just finish it. Then. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Well, so yeah. While I like to think Tom's would more than likely finish a delay TP, like the more delayed it is, the far more difficult it is. So. Got on the blue perfectly, but That's has had to nudge black a yard away from the hoop. Was that intentional, or was that was that forced by the position he was in? The fact that black's moved a yard, maybe a yard and a half away from where he's trying to pop it. To be fair, given we readers, he's probably conceded defeat on the yeah. popping. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on like how yeah how quickly he can pull together a leave after uh, after two back and what kind of leave he's trying to set he, if you know if he's trying to play a, like a standard style of spread or standard in his hell then playing good shots after two back and he probably no nah, you know potentially no nah, yeah, yeah popping after two back is, he probably won't actually have enough time to actually yeah pull a leave together. It's interesting though, because a lot of players think that popping is a... isn't that important of, an, of a tactic, because they like to think that, you know, good players are going to finish anyway. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, you know, you know, and why would you give your opposition extra hoops, right? Yeah. Um, Whereas I like to think pro K is a percentages game. So even if you're 10% less likely to finish a break, sure you might still finish it, but in the best of five, that 10% can be quite critical. Yeah. What's he going to do now? Presumably he's going to black, but yeah. where's blue going? Is this going to be this a roll? Blue will probably be his hoop. There's two, two back, two back pioneer. Pioneer. Yeah. I'll just get a rush on black up to red. Black, yeah, up to red. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's exactly what he's done. Oh, yeah, it's exactly what he's done. Not perfect. Will really he be happy with that? Mm. Blue's sort I think blue's in the way here, where he yeah, wants to hit this. Yeah, you're right there. I think, yeah, because he's going to want to try and cut this as close to red as possible, because red's not a good pioneer. I think he might accept the, uh, the boundary. Oh, he just snuck past the... Blue, but it's not gone very far. No. Uh, it's not too bad. Uh, it's not too bad to be playing a takeoff from. It was about as good as he could do, probably. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so he's looking to play. He's, I think, leave what? Oh, yeah, I don't know actually. Leave why? Leave wise, he could potentially, potentially looking to just do a pre-standard MSL or NSL. Yeah, no, he hasn't played a great shot here. Hmm. 
So he's left himself quite a significant cut to Big, get in front of. Yeah. And with the lawn slower, he might have to hit this fairly firm as well. It's not the shot you want to be playing, is it? No, not from that distance. <laughs> There's two yards behind the hoop, a yard, yard and a half. It's nearly two, isn't it? Yeah. Again, you'd expect them to be fine here, but it's, again, it's one of those lower percentage shots where you don't, don't necessarily really want to be playing this type of shot. No. Though, I think if you're a very confident hoop runner, like yourself, you're in, oh, in, yeah. in this kind of I'm, situation. I'm not too concerned here, yeah, but... You're not sweet enough. But obviously... Rob will probably be slightly frustrated by the fact that his well in control breaks. He's ended up with a two foot. Two it's foot? Come two. down, it's quite angled as well. It's come down to it. This is not good, is it? No, this is quite a critical. This isn't pretty. This is quite a critical hoop shot for Robert. As you see, putting it, yeah. Put a bit, putting a bit of more thought, bit more thought into the shot. Yeah. And this has been because he. Attempted those pops. Quite often, even when you're completing TPs, looking to complete a, complete a peel, it basically feeds off off the break. You pop. I don't know more difficult line of play. Put, puts balls out of position. The um, the peels sort of or peel attempts sort of feed off the break. And if you break, yeah, can then they start to not necessarily fall apart, but can get a bit shaky. Is it at all possible he's considering not trying the soup? Because he's having a look around the lawn. It's very angled. This is outside the corner, I think. Yeah. Uh, this isn't pretty at all. Is he looking at a scatter? No. Uh, I think he is. <laughs> a scatter on the red. Yeah, well, he's, cause he hasn't given away a lift yet. So he, if he no. chucked. So if he hits red on the left hand side, yellow's going to go what? Red's, if he tries to put red on the halfway line, and then yellow's going to be. Yeah, half ball red onto the boundary. Yeah, and then yellow's like... going to go over to. Um, Where's he going for the hoop? I can't no, no, this is for red. This is red. Uh, he's really undecided on what he wants to do here, but I think he has set on the red. Yeah, that was a significantly angled hoop. Yeah, I'm not sure many people would be turning it down, though. Uh, do you think so? Or at this stage, is that. I think the big thing for Rob is he just doesn't want to give Tom, Tom anything easy. No. But Tom's been pretty solid on his 15 yarders, so and this is going to be less than 15. Okay. Um, I think red's just gone off along virtually directly level with the blue. That's not good, is it? No, I think you're ideally, you, you, if you're going to choose that one play, you probably want a half ball red a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, it needed to be on the halfway line rather than up nearby corner yeah, one. Yeah, and chucking yellow off the boundary. <clears throat> So this is because at least at least with the red sort of like I say on the halfway line as sort of in what you'd call a sort of a tri triangulation. So yeah. if blue or black shoot at each other, it still gives red a short shot. Yeah, yeah. So he's taking black at yellow here. Is that the correct shot? Blue at red's shorter, but obviously blue's a hoop one pioneer. Yeah, I think if blue if you miss red, then it just gives a break. It just gives it all back to Robert. Interesting. Whereas he's taken, he's taken the. It's a free shot essentially, because yeah, nice it's shot. Yeah. So he's hit it, but if he'd missed, he's in corner four. Whereas then Rob's going to turn around and what hit blue, yeah. you know, and then. Whereas if if which is still would have been what seven eight yards. Whereas if black shoots it or blue, either black or blue shoots at red and misses, then it gives you know Rob a, a one foot, a one mm -hmm. footer mm -hmm. to keep the break or keep the innings. I might be getting a bit excited here for no reason, but there's no chance that we might potentially see Robert try and SXP as there if Tom were to leave him something that was doable. Oh, from here? Yeah, it, it, I mean, we're assuming now that Tom's going to get round. Yeah, yeah. He's um, not, not going to try, is he? Potentially not. And why would that be? Just because, again, percentages. Yeah. 
again, it's, it's one of those things like keeping the innings. Yeah. You know, leaving the lawn under control. These are all important things that, you know, just keeping the innings and forcing your opposition to hit can be enough to just win a game. Yeah. But potentially, if um, Tom were to not, um, not go around fully, then you might leave a position Rob was excited by. Maybe. Maybe I'm clutching at straws. I don't know. This is a yard. A yard, slightly angled. Maybe it's less than a yard. He's going to run this. It should be fine. Yeah. Commentator's curse. I imagine. No, I think it's absolutely fine. Yeah. yeah. And a rush to yellow. Yeah, what's controlled too? Rush, rush. Quite jealous control, actually, because yeah. I'm definitely chucking that five yards out, <laughs> and turning around and trying to hit like a three yarder. Mhm. Mm So nice we rush over to yellow. When is he going to come and collect this red? Or is he not? Must be. I thought it seemed like a good time to collect red uh, straight after who won, with where it is. Because mm, uh, again, the issue would be he would have had to turn around and like. Maybe getting a rush on blue to red and then fielding it red at blue in a little bit and then rushing red over to yellow. But now that he's got a reasonable hoop, three pioneer, he could turn potentially turn around after making two, get a rush towards red, send yellow into the middle, hit red and then play cross stroke loading four and going to blue. Okay. Um, well, let's see what he goes for. Yeah, he's doesn't not, look like no. It looks like he's putting yellow fairly deep. Yeah. He might potentially look to three. He might look to three ball to yeah. five-ish, and then come and get it. He's left himself another hoop that Rob certainly wouldn't be happy with. <laughs> These are, both hoops so far have been double the length of anything Rob had, apart from yeah. one back. Yeah. It's interesting because what generally happens, um, I don't know, for develop anyway for developing AC players, and you'll probably find this human is that your single ball strokes are really good now and they sort of save you because you know you're very used to hitting three yard mm -hmm. three yard hoops you know four yard row case five yard row case mid break you know but then as your career strokes look to improve your rushes and your hoop distance get shorter so all of a sudden when you actually and then all of a sudden your single ball strokes aren't as good as what they used to be yeah yeah um, because you don't have to you don't have to play these sort of long hoops mm -hmm. and long row, row case this isn't good is it the I think hoop six is exactly where he would want to put the black. He's looking. He's even looking at red. The angle for this the black must be near hoop six. It just, yeah. He's gone long and left himself a five yarder. It wasn't a nice place, was yeah, it? Yeah, no, that's not ideal. Though to be fair, in these conditions on these lines, like they don't really heal much. No. How how hard is he going to hit this? Do we think we're going to get a hard shot, or is it just going to be? Backing yourself. I think he's making. Yeah, no, he's making sure of hitting this. <laughs> and he's just nicked it on the right <laughs> side. <laughs> wow. We, where's Ben Rothman when we needed an applause? <laughs> that was a shot. That was an important <laughs> shot. Yeah. Well, they all count. Interesting enough, if he just played with a bit of a wider split, avoiding heap six, he probably could have just hit it to where it is now, like on the opposite side. Yeah, just no, taken no, off. No. Yep. So, so this is good. Yeah, two feet in right in front, back in control, maybe. <laughs> yeah, get it, not quite, but get a rush to hoop, get a rush to red. Yeah. Again, I think another like important, you know, an important skill to have, especially for develop, obviously developing AC players like yourself, Ewan, um, is the ability from anywhere like three yards down the hoop to put the ball within like a foot of the hoop, yeah, and then be able to get a rush out of it. If you can do that, <clears throat> like watching Fulford go round or you know, watching Rob go round, he's always getting con these nice short hoops, running them with a little bit of control getting a rush and also his croquet strokes aren't nearly the distance no that he's what well, you know that's one of the hardest things I find getting the rush out of the hoop it is. Yeah. it's not very easy and you you play your 
you know, you you play your hoop approach and you think, oh, I'm playing it from a foot here, and then you realise, oh, but actually, I, I can't get a, a forward rush, or yeah. I've got to be a bit yeah. aggressive to try and get a forward rush. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, for sure. Um, whereas looking at um, like Rob's break, his sort of his hoop does okay. He's doing well to get round, and and quite again, quite often in these conditions, it's you know. Is it, you know, it doesn't. It doesn't really. Might not matter the length of hoop you sort of give yourself, but um, you know, he's sort of, you know, going back to the earlier point. If you had, if he just got one, maybe he got a one rush out of a hoop, then all of a sudden that makes his cricket stroke small, like shorter, and then all of a sudden it looks much tidier, and he's, you know, less of a risk of breaking down. Mhm. Mm so, will Thomas start thinking about? Digging out red soonish or a potential. I'm assuming he's, he's doing. Yeah, that. I'm assuming he's chucked blue on the because he's going go to go west boundary. Now. Yeah, to go to red. No, no, he isn't. He's opted to just go straight to blue. So really, blue was just a poor pioneer. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Would to be fair, he's quite a quick player though. So interesting because after you have put blue there, surely going to red is. An option and just helped keep everything. Well, he, could have, uh, he could have taken off to red and played the croquet stroke. Yeah. And then that way, at least blue, at least yellow, even though he left it where it was, at least yellow's like seven yards in the lawn. Mm -hmm. You get a rush behind it after hoop five and you can bring everything in together. So the, the issue he's at that Tom's having right now is okay, he's got five more hoops to make before a four back leave. Yep. When's he going to get rid of and then what, well, leave, yeah. what leave is he going to actually set once having pulled rid of That's what I'm thinking. I was going to ask you, what do you think the leave will be? <coughs> um, I feel like most players here just didn't play like an NSL or an NSL. Mm -hmm. Well, an NSL with like the, you know, the sort of warm variation. Um, so that potentially could be what he's looking to looking to play. Does he not need a bit more control to be doing this? An NSL definitely. I think the, the one positive thing about like the diagonal spread, you know, it's generally people's put bread and butter leave. Yeah. Is you don't need there's nothing there's no nothing fiddly about hoops and the peg, even if you don't get the wiring at the peg, sure. Depending where you've put you know, sort of the forward ball or the ball on the west boundary. You're still leaving a twelve yeah, thirteen yard maybe. Whereas you know, but like I try to set a Bryant leave, which is yesterday against Fulford, um, which was basically an NSL, but with the ball on the west boundary and the jaws of hoop one, well, two back. Yeah, um, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, and, and you just it just poked through too much, didn't it? Yeah, both the times. One in, one yeah, both back. times it wouldn't sit up against the leg, the two back leg, um, and, and you know, as a result. Yeah, I ended up having to play some form of like basically hitting hitting a ball, you know, any you know, in the corner four to avoid giving away a the world. Yeah, which is funny enough I did anyway, but <laughs> um. So now he hasn't had <coughs> A good pioneer in this break since hoop four has he? No, no, it hasn't mattered. No, the hoop four wasn't. Was, I can't. Uh, no, hoop four was okay, I think. But I mean, this is his longest approach now, isn't it? This is three yards. Uh, two, two yards, I think. But I think he'll be fine. But there's no. Surely he's going to go to the red before two back. <laughs> Surely. Yeah, yeah, he'll, um, I'm assuming he's going to send blue into the middle because you can't. One of the one of the sort of golden rules of leave making, especially on the way to fullback, or just leaves in general, is you don't want to be making your last hoop off partner. Yep, and well, so he's going to send probably send blue into the middle. Yeah, going to red, red and then load feedback, going to yellow. Yeah, but. <sighs> Yeah, I think he's got to play a few good shots there. Well, yeah, because this is, again, if he had a nicer pioneer with if yellow was a nicer pioneer, then that makes that shot so much more easier because yeah. you only have to get close to it. You don't actually need a rush. It's like a yard in front. Whereas the moment it's like three yards. He's well, he's got a five yarder out of the ball here. <laughs> I'm sure he'll survive, but it's looking a bit like my breaks at the moment. <laughs> Do 
shot. Yeah, like I said, he, he'll, you know, he's a good enough single ball. He's got a good enough single ball stroke that he'll be fine. But again, we were talking about percentages and likelihood of going around. Again, the hoops and like the hoops and the lawns are easy enough that even with a low, with a lot of like subpar sort of pioneers, he's still fine. Still going to get round. Probably still see a good leave. Mm-hmm. Right, so he's got a two yarder on his five yard pioneer, pretty. Hey, some people would be happy with that. No, I know. <laughs> That's a good shot. Yeah, he's played a nice rush there. Mm hmm. This could be coming our way. I just had a ball come into the commentator's tent. Some Highland will try and take out Ewan. Almost took my leg out. I did try and stop it, but it bounced. One of those dodgy ones that bounces just a foot in front of you. So you've judged it wrong. Yeah, let's take that kneecaps. <laughs> <laughs> nice, solid, centre ball. He was looking at that as though he's concerned about something. I can't... Would he have wanted yellow to go a little bit further? But not as so far. Can, not as far. Uh, I thought further so he can get the angle. Yeah, no, you might be right, ball. actually, yeah, because given that Reed's not that great of a pioneer and as, as an option, instead of... So here, here he's, look, he's you know, going to see a diagonal spread and he's going to look to... You know, Blue will be his escape ball after doing, doing the wiring at the peg. Um, but his two options would be either just tap Blue, which is what I think he's doing, He's looking at what he can what he can do. It is just a tap though. Yeah. Unless he's. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Bit of indecision here. Yeah, I think I, I think he just played that last shot with, on yellow, without really having decided what he was going to do with his next shot. Okay. Oh yeah. 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 So uh, he could have either just tapped it and taken off to red. It's a slightly more difficult shot, or rush blue behind, and then croquet it back into position going to red so he'd be looking to play well now he's going to have him play sort of a half roll but if he had a better rush he would have been looking to just play like like a nice short stop shot yeah and generally speaking if you play sort of the the if the strike you know with your curry strikes if your striker's ball can travel the smallest amount of distance then you're more likely to play a successful shot mm -hmm. you know generally speaking your striker's ball is the most important ball um and so yeah and your curry strikes if that only have, if has to travel maybe a yard or two you know, three, four yards max, then it puts less pressure on on your break and your ability to play the shots. It's starting to look a bit more like a leave, isn't it? Yeah. Unfortunately, Blue's gone maybe two yards too far. So okay. after getting the wiring with yellow, he's potentially not going to have a rush over to sort of max distance on the east boundary. Yeah. Again, he'll probably get it somewhere like halfway up, halfway up the east boundary, and then roll it seven yards. But again, the issue with that is then he's less likely to have the wiring, less likely to have the all the balls wired through the peg. He's got a nice rush out there, hasn't he? Yeah, generally speaking, it's probably one of when it comes to sending a diagonal spread, it's sort of the most important rush because it means like what he's done here is he can put it nice and close to yellow. <coughs> yeah, back ball travels maybe three yards. He's not having to play a difficult shot. No. Whereas if you don't get the rush, then you're having to play some kind of half roll, half roll type yeah. thing. And then yeah, if you probably potentially don't get a right, you end up you know next thing you know you end up like maybe two yards away from yellow and have to dribble at it. This yellow's not going. Any, uh, this red's not going anywhere near the boundary. Um, so just answering Marcus Evans' question, um, I'm Logan McCondell, one of the Kiwi players um, who is commentating with Ewan today. Now then, would you? I mean, obviously it's going to be wired from the yellow anyway. But why was there no attempt to get red foot close to the boundary? I think it's just it can just be a risky shot. Putting it too far. I mean, having said that, I did I did do the same trick yesterday and put one off the lawn, so yeah. I should yeah. probably just. Yeah. Gen like, generally speaking. You don't want to put this into position for takeoff, though, do you? 
No, no, I really. I'm happy. I'm happy doing that. You're not going to croak it into position. No, that no. could be open. I'm going to. I'm going to have a look for us. Yeah. Um. You, again, when it comes to setting like a diagonal spread, generally speaking, you want to have um, the ball that you're looking to wire through the peg, um, sort of what's called on the rush line. Um, so if you can rush it. And to put sort of even if it's a wee way away from the hoop, if as a peg, if you can rush it to an already wide spot and then just croquet okay, it a little bit closer, then again you're more likely to actually complete the wiring. Was yeah, it, you can't see yeah. enough of it to be even thinking about it. Yeah. Another important like, aspect to remember, like with your diagonal spreads here, other, or to consider, mm -hmm. um, is sort of how you. I like to think of it as like or, the orientation on like a clock. So if you so what Tom's done here, I'm assuming it's intentional. Um, he's put a sort of max distance on the east boundary, yeah. so that if Fulford decides to play from a ball, which I don't think he will, he'll it's probably be the long shot. He'll take the long Corner shot. Four, isn't it? Um, it means that you know even from a ball, it's still a 16 yarder. Yeah. Again, it's one again again one of the things to consider is when you're setting your leave is what is your opposition going to look to shoot from okay so Fulford's going to take the long I'm assuming he's going to take the long shot I think so because he's going to want to put pressure on Tom's croquet strokes yeah. yeah um Fulford's just returning from the pavilion so I think what Tom really should have done um is probably move another maybe three to four yards south south yeah. Potentially looking to force Fulford into playing the short shot, which, okay, if Fulford's, pro you know, if he hits, he hits, but if he misses, he's going to get, he would have given, he'd give Tom like a good yeah. chance of getting a stand, <coughs> a stand, digging out a standard triple from there. Mm -hmm. Whereas, mm, if you know your opposition is going to take the long shot, then why would you, why make that shot maybe two yards shorter than what it needs to be? Sure. And what are we going to see from Robert? It is there a chance we see him um, bringing the tactic that I know Reg and Robert Fletcher both use at certain points of the week with a TPO with Red? Possibly. Yeah. TPO with Red and, uh, yeah. I and, think that's and both balls off? Or is that mm, no? One ball, uh, probably one ball off. Okay. So that will be the main aim for this break potentially. But he's got to hit first. And uh, how far <laughs> yeah. is this? What? 18 yards, yeah. maybe? Probably less than that. Um, yeah, it's quite, it quite a critical, critical shot to hit. I always like to think of lift shots as like momentum shifters with, within a game or within a match. Quite often what it takes is hitting one of them and then that, that is it. Um, and if, for, if Robert can hit this, then that I like to think that sort of makes up for his mistake earlier. Yeah. Just taking his time here, he recognises the importance of this shot as well. But let's see. The first time he gets me to hit this. <laughs> he doesn't like it, does he? No, he's missed. I feel like he's missed quite a bit on the, you know, mm, the left side. I thought so, but then I don't think it's gone in the corner. I think it missed the corner. West. It might have missed no, right. East. No. It missed left, and then don't think it, it might might have gone in the corner, but it certainly went close to the yard mm. marker. Which, so unless um, of course Tom's ball wasn't on the uh, yeah, not wasn't on the yard, the yard line. line. Yeah, which I suppose is a possibility. Which is again, it's another another one of those like small things to take into, take into consideration when you're sitting your diagonal spread or like leaves in general. Is even having something like six inches off the yard line. If let's say you hit the inborn ball, getting a rush behind it makes it so, it's so much easier. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just like, or even like four inches. Like I know we're talking about such a small distance from the cocaine green, but if you're taking off from maybe three yards away and your ball is yeah six inches off the yard line, there's so much more room to get behind it. Thanks, Kevin, for your compliments. I think we're pretty happy with how it went, and we're quite yeah. glad now to be sitting in, in the, yeah. inside out of the rain. Yeah. I mean, I'd still rather be playing, but also there is the added benefit of we dry, aren't we? <laughs> there we go. Marcus Evans just pointed out when he played against Rob in the blocks, he 
Rob hit, TPO'd Marcus and then took two off, peed two balls off. Having done three, three, three peels on partner yeah. as well. Three peels on partner? Yeah, TPO with three peels on partner. So he done six peels in the turn. Those clips. And then pegged two off. Yeah, so that makes sense. Because he's a significant, yeah, if it's, if it's what, three back V1. This is too far. I like, yeah, I'd, li I'd like feedback's chances to, to finish, to win off that. Yeah. This is, oh, I wouldn't fancy this. No. To get a break going, to get for a stand, for a delayed TP, I'm not liking the shot. So again, the lawn's are easy enough, the hoop's are easy enough, you'll probably be fine, but again, it's one of those lower percentage shots where, because he doesn't get a rush, or a nice rush going to one. How far is this going to be? Two and a half yards, the hoop? I feel like he's is that going this. too far? He's over That's this. going way too he's, far. He's sitting there. A game good, on. He's sitting at a good yard. That's gone a long way past. This a yard on, past the hoop. Yeah, what are we going to see next? Surely you, just, surely you just hit red and roll off your hoop and finish, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, you just do a takeoff from yeah, corner four. Yeah. Continue um, the break. Yeah, so you're not, what, in this situation, where would you put blue? Um, Other than in front of the hoop, because it's letter C grade. Corner material. two. Corner two. Yeah. Where he's going somewhere where he's going to leave yellow a double. No, no, not, no quite. not quite. So he's sort, he's doing what he, he's basically guarding the short shot. So yeah. if Rob chooses to shoot at black, which to be fair, I I probably would shoot at black if I if I thought I was shooting well. I'm shooting at black is a short enough shot that I'm taking that on anyway. Okay, and that's just the way I look at it. And again, other players can look at it a bit differently. How um, is Rob going to look at this? Again, he might just look and go, it's a short shot. It looks like the way he's walking, that's what he's going to do. Yeah, just a short shot. You just hit it. Um, but at least what, what Tom's looked to do is, is if Rob misses, then he can continue with his break. Yeah. Whereas if we look to hit into corner, corner two is not too bad, because at least then if Rob hits, he hasn't really got much. Um, but... Or corner three, but again, the issue with that is that if Rob just went hit, hit it really and missed, mm -hmm. then you've also got a hit partner, and that's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, 10 yarder here, pretty big shot in the match, I think, potentially. Yeah, because if Rob can hit this, then there's potential for him to go four back, go four back, instead of leave and have a TP of his own, potentially, yeah. in a minute, or even, or even potentially, because again, I like to think of lift shots as like big momentum shifters, yeah, so. Even if he just set a leave from here, assuming he hits. Oh, I thought he, he hasn't. That. No, he missed by quite a long way. Um, um, yeah, because even if even if he hit and then set a leave, he's giving Tom maybe a twenty to twenty-five yarder, rather than hit, rather than you know a, a fifteen like a fifteen yarder if he goes to fall back and sets a lead. Um, yeah, Rob's missed. Yeah, Rob's missed that. Very good, I don't know, 10 inches on the right. Um, which obviously is, is not ideal, it's not a big confidence booster either, because again, it, once, you, once you get to sort of quarter fire, you know, once you get to knockouts in the wheels, or even block play, like the ability to shoot is such a critical, it's such a critical, critical thing. Um, you know, my top 16 play, um, knockout game against James Deeth. You know, we neither of us made you know very many errors. Well, we didn't make any errors, um, more or less. And it just came down to who shot the best. Um, so Tom's, yeah, hit yellow, croquet yellow in front of two, rushing black, and he's put it all the way to the boundary, which. Again, at least this time, rather than his previous shot, at least this time he's in front, in front of the hoop. So he's pretty guaranteed of giving himself a hoop shot. But again, it's not really a place to be wanting to approach from. Yeah, he's played this well here. 
Is this from south? Maybe a yard? Maybe a bit over a yard? Yeah, he's run this. Almost, almost worth a rush to read. Um, but chances are he's just going to gently hit black and then croquet it to hoop three, going to yellow. Interesting, interesting, interestingly enough, one of the things that this, you know, because of the sort of brief interaction between Rob and Tom, has sort of resulted in Tom sending Black to fall back, sorry, yeah, to Hoop 3 as a Hoop 3 Pioneer and then going to Yellow, rather than if he managed to approach Hoop 1 the first time, he would have been able to then, he would have had to then send, um, opposition so he would have then sent yellow to three as his hoop three pioneer and then to sent black to hoop four and during his delay tp attempt there's the option if your part you know if your PLE is that is your hoop four pioneer is after making hoop four getting a rush back to um four back or hoop three and peeling four back after hoop four um here he's got the option again i sort of doubt i doubt he'll probably take this on he's probably just going to play pretty standard line and just like to complete the standard the sort of sort of standard delay tp if you want to call it that um he's probably going to look to just send yellow down to hoop down to hoop four give me a rush on black to make hoop three um but because blue black he was able to send black there first Another potential line of play would be to actually leave yellow just maybe to either a little bit to the east or west of hoop three, get a rush on black, um, and then look to peel black after three, then a rush on yellow, rush yellow down to vaguely in front of hoop four, um, crash through hoop four, and then hit yellow red, uh, hit red on the boundary. Um, admittedly. The sort of trade-off is it gives him a standard TP, which is significantly easier, but it does would mean he would have to hit like a six, seven yard, six yard rokeh mid break. Um, I think Tom's sort of proven he's pretty comfortable hitting those sorts of shots, so it, it would have been a potential line of play. Uh, but here he's just opted to sort of look to play more of his just standard delay TP. So there's sort of a pretty, yeah, he'll, from here he'll look to probably just tap black and take off to red in the corner. I was talking about, I was just, I was just saying how, um, because he was able to send black there first, one of his options for getting a standard TP out of here would be to actually leave yellow as his escape ball at yeah. hoop three, peel, go into yellow, and rush yellow and then stop shot yellow vaguely close to five, run his hoop and then hit red. Which is a very aggressive one to play because it gives him like a seven yard mid break. Yeah. But it would mean he would have a standard TP. Which is potentially when you're looking to do TPs, you and that would be a line of play you could opt for rather than forcing yourself to have to play a delay TP, which you have to play more good croquet strokes. Yeah. No, sounds fairly sensible. He caught that fairly in the middle, I thought. Originally, just off a quick look, it looked like he just skimmed it, but mm. he got plenty of it. You don't, you're right, he did give himself what, a four, four to five yarder to, yeah. to hit. See, normally speaking in this situation, you would want yellow just past hoop, just a little south of hoop, hoop four. Yeah. So then he can play this shot, putting, again, reds, this is, it's actually not, this is not a good shot. So he's ended up putting red in sort of, I don't know, two yards south of five, where you probably want it sort of level, just, just yeah. east of it. That's 
He's lucky. He's got away with it. Yeah, he's done it again. Yeah, I'll give him that. It's a good shot there, but that was that was very close to <laughs> not. I mean, that's probably a ball's yeah. roll away from not being in front. Yeah. It's a slight angle already. Yeah, that was that was close. But that's why. He wants it now. Um, or well, bread's uh, still poor. Yeah, red's not ideal. No. One of the issues with that being where it is, because he's going to look to rush yellow down to um, fall back to set up his peel. Yeah. The issue with where red is is because it's the hoop is pretty more or less well, in the want, road. You want it to be this side, and, well, north and maybe, east. Maybe a north foot east. north, a, in a foot east. Yeah, you want you'd want it. So then, even if you end up playing the, the, the takeoff like two yards short you still dribble at it and put it maybe yeah. a yard in front mm -hmm. um, whereas with where it is now I mean, if he's saying back if he plays it short there's potential number one to end up in the hoop five and then then it's like okay turn over if he plays short he's still going to give himself like a two like a three yard three yard approach mm -hmm. and then when, you, when you're doing delayed TPs it's the hoop getting a rush at hoop five is probably the most critical shot yeah um, especially when it comes to get, well, getting the. So once you, generally speaking, once you can complete the full back peel on a TP, the rest of it yeah. significantly easier. Um, and so if he doesn't get this peel now, then. I mean, he may. This isn't reaching, is it? No, I think. No, no, no. it's done fine. No, it's gone. It's gone well it's gone past, miles past I, it. I thought that was short. Yeah. It just kept going. So now. He really needs a tap this, doesn't he, to give himself room to get the forward rush out of. Yeah, I'd, ideally you probably want to be about a yard in, like a yard in front, and then you put, play it to maybe a yeah. foot in front, and the your reception ball like, I don't know, a yard and a half out of the... That's good then. Yeah, he's done fine there. What do you reckon the chances of him finishing this turn are now? It really depends on what kind of rush he gets after this hoop. Yeah. Mm. He's likely to get a forward rush. But yeah. It's more than likely to be a rush towards the uh, east boundary. Yeah. Yeah. It's, well, that's not. I mean, that's not too bad. He can get it probably a good halfway up the mm. east boundary. So, you know, that croco stroke loading one back going to his PLE isn't that difficult. But ideally, you'd want to be much closer, and you just play a nice little sort of short, short stop shot. Would well, you want black a tiny bit closer to the hoop, or already? You got it a lot closer. Well, yeah. it's fine there, because then even things up like two yards behind it, you just need to dribble at it to nudge it closer. Red's gone. Which is more or less where he's going to end up. Yeah, it's not too bad. No, it's fine. But again, it's sort of one of those conting contingency plans. You can you can chuck red maybe a yard and a half in front of one bag, and then if you didn't get this peel, yeah, after making hoop six, you'd get a rush into corner three, mm -hmm. stop shot, yellow down into to two bag, and then. Do a nice little split roll, trying to peel, going to the ball at at one back, which is no longer an option because no. he's because of where he's red is put yeah. red. Yeah. So this is this is tricky, though, isn't it? This is a one yard angle peel. We're playing over with a bit of pull. Yeah, yeah. I think it'll be a good shot if he gets this through. This is coming our way. Shot. It's quite quite a critical critical shot as well. <laughs> Callum's put another ball in the commentary box. It's a bit of a menace to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, nice shot. Still a slightly, ang yeah, slightly angled rush going to Ang six. Mm. Those should be fine. He'll be cruising once he makes hoop six, won't he? But hoop six is always like some sort of make or break. And he's played a really good rush to get 
Um, almost in front. He's, yeah, he'll be fine. Interestingly enough, another genius. But what he'll probably end up doing is he'll approach, he'll make his hoop, probably rush. Okay, he's. Oh. Yeah, he's. I think he was looking to get a rush on yellow behind. Oh, can he hit the yellow? He should be able to. Right, yeah, I think he's fine. He's fine. That doesn't, was... doesn't need a referee. He does need a referee, no, but I think well... it's just a precaution. Yeah, it he looks fine. like he can hit that without needing to do anything special. What, what you can do here to get, or again, maybe this is what he's trying to do, and then that's what made the approach more difficult, is get a rush on yellow towards corner three again, and then stop shot it down to two back. And then from there, as long as you hit black, you can then send black vaguely in front of Penalt going to the ball at one back. And again, yeah. if the ball at one back was a yard and a half in front, then that makes that split easier. Um, and then from there, after making one back, you can then look to play a what's called a death roll. Yeah. Um, Peeling Penalt going to the ball at t two back, and then you sort of get your delayed triple, turn it more into standard. And yeah. then that would give you the, the potential option of peeling rover going through that rather than having to peel going to four back and then a straight rover it's a big shot but I d uh, it does look like the hoop's sort of in play but I think he should be okay here yeah. it's just a precaution for the referee really yeah that's yeah. fine okay well he hasn't got the rush into corner three no, absolutely so I see here he'll just play a take off or even like a we split stop shot thing, getting a rush on black probably like half halfway up the north boundary and then mm -hmm. send black down into two back. Yep. And then he'll be looking to peel. He'll be looking to peel. He'll get a rush. Um after two back back up to Penalt and then look to peel Penalt after three back going to four back. Okay. Is that easy? Isn't it are you going the wrong way or is he gonna have balls to play with it? He'll be, be fun. He'll be fine. It's one of the big things of you know trying to complete delayed TPs is just playing on your it depends on how good your average shot is on how easy it's gonna be. Yeah. So it's like this will be stop shot here. If you can get like a two, like a three foot rush to one back and put this ball black, you know, but she's not happy with this, and rightly so, because he'd want this maybe a yard yeah. in front, because mm -hmm. then it means he's more likely to get a, 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 a no one an easy hoop, an easy two back, and then a nice easy rush um, going back to Penal. So the rain has really started to come down. Yeah. Um, as of yet, there's no sign of lawns becoming drastically wet. Um, it's absorbing it pretty well at the moment, but certainly something to look out for. If this continues for the rest of the match, I think the lawns could be pretty wet by the end. Yeah, I, know. I think you'd be right. I guess the fact that we're on lawn three here probably means that should remain slightly drier than one and two, one and two, which are obviously on a lower level as the lawns. How would you describe it? What's the drain? The camber of the not, camber. Oh, no, no, no. The way that the way the lawns are offset in in terms of the height. Um, they probably, yeah, I would say every subsequent lawn from four down to one probably drops a good half a meter. Yeah. So they would all probably drain towards the lawn. Exactly. One. So I think we're probably on the second best lawn in terms of drainage. And that also marries up with the fact that lawn four and lawn three are probably looking the brownest as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but the water just isn't hanging around. Yeah. Particularly around the boundaries where they'd also slope off. Yeah. Mm, that's a red spread. That shot was quite reasonable. That, see, that, that's sort of the shot he sort of needed to get back on track, being able to have a good pint or a reasonably good pioneer at three back and have a rush going back to going to black sure because now he's going to be able to put yellow relatively close to Penal, get a maybe a three foot rush on black mm -hmm. oh, this really is horrible condition i would not want to be out there 
you can see it coming off the camera. I don't know whether it's due to get any better. I'll have a look now. Yeah, you're right. I think I might try it away. I mean, I'd still rather be out there playing, but being knocked out isn't the worst thing in the world <laughs> considering the conditions. <laughs> it's horrible. Um, that wasn't. Yeah, so ideal was it? Plan B here. So ideally, he probably he would have wanted to rush that. Again, he would have wanted like a one yard rush, rush, rush this maybe a foot in front, send Black just to the left of the hoop um, or east, and then uh, run it by like three feet and have like a two foot rush going back to um, Penalt. But instead, here he's had to put it deep. He still played a good shot. Give himself a two foot. Yeah, he looked, he looked relieved with that shot. He got a nice wee kick out and almost hit red. And the moment he, if he hit red, that meant he would have had to play like a three-quarter roll, chucking black vaguely near Penalt, getting a rush on yellow. And quite often it's like those moments can be enough to, to absolutely destroy a delayed triple. Yeah. You know, hitting, your, hitting your reception ball will try and get a rush on it. So I'm just looking at the radar for the next what hour and 50 minutes and yeah there's not much sign of it getting any better it doesn't appear to get much worse which could be crucial because i think if it did get a lot worse we might start to see some puddles which may halt play yeah, probably would you yeah. know i don't think robert would play in the rain <laughs> no i don't think so no he won't play in puddles not yeah not playing the rain. So, it's looking okay. He's having to play a big takeoff here to red, isn't he? Yeah. The good thing is, like, again, the red's like a relatively good yeah. pioneer. Ideally, you, ideally, you'd probably want it, I don't know, maybe a foot north of the hoop. Just because that means that, again, if he plays it short and he dribbles at it, yeah, he's putting it in yeah. front. Whereas here, if he ends up potentially past it, then. He's rushing it closer, closer to the hoop, which would mean he's not guaranteed to get a rush. And then if he's where he's going to end up now, no, just like this, it's five yards short, and Red's not in the right place, so he's going to be pushing it further away. Isn't yeah, it? probably closer, probably closer to three yards. But yeah, he's going to dribble at it, probably pump it three yards in front of the hoop. Again, he's probably going to be fine. But you know, if he's playing like on difficult lawns, oh, trying yeah, to yeah. complete this turn, again, the further that is back, his strike ball has to travel. He's given himself a four-yard approach. I'm, I'm interested in this because I don't know whether it's just me or he seems to have just started slightly overhitting some of these approaches. I don't know whether that's him struggling to adapt to the change in lawn speed, but there's been a couple of approaches that have been overhit. That's a good one. It's fine. But then. obviously, who six and who one were both well over over approached. So he's still, he be him, fine he's here. still giving himself a one-yard hoop. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, he has, and he's failed to get a rush. Now, <clears throat> if he'd put, if he'd been able to put, so generally speaking, when I'm trying to complete uh, the Penalt peel going to fall back in a delayed TP, ideally I want Black maybe just a foot east of why of um, Penalt because from here, well, he, didn't, he wouldn't have had to hit it that hard to begin with. He could have literally just tapped it and just played just a little full roll, putting it, getting a little yard rush, and then just dribbling at it and nudging it in front, whereas. Because it's because it's in front of the hoop or north of hoop of Penalt, it means that he actually has to actually get a rush a rush on it back. Okay. Um, and so it has meant that red's going to end off essentially end off in the middle of nowhere. Um, he was asking for it to sit down. Or was he asking it for it to go? Maybe. Yeah, I think he's played it, played it marginally short. Again, he should be up there in a nice little cut rush, but it's maybe a yard and a half in front. Whereas again, it's not the ideal place to be peeling from. Now, he's probably just going to look to peel this, but in this kind of situation, if he was able to actually just jaws it, that's probably actually a, maybe, I don't know, depending on your opinion, maybe a better, a better outcome. Because if he looks to jaws it, then after making hoop, making fallback, he can then rush yellow to red, chuck it towards the peg, and then rush red over to black, nudge black, and then play the... The double pair on tonight. Yeah. Sounds quite complicated. It is complicated. Completing TPs is complicated. Well, especially when you've got a 
two yard pin-up peel before fall back. Yeah, again, the most important aspect of this shot is actually getting a rush yeah, on yellow. Yeah, exactly. If he, gets, if he doesn't get a rush on yellow, or not a good one, then there's potential that he doesn't make fall back. Yeah. You know, I've been quite surprised about when it comes to people lining up peels. Is that I, no one, no one, um, no one assumes you know takes the full beached whale position. Everyone likes to have like the one knee on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's and not he's bad, got his but... rushes all around. Um, yeah, it's yeah. fine. He should be. Yeah. Point, I mean, it's pointing in the right direction, right? So it's like that is the most important part. Yeah. His um, chances of winning this game are quickly going up, aren't they? Yeah, again, if he'd been able to peel it, then he's probably gone up even more. Well, yeah, but... It, dep it, dep it depends what kind of shot he's more comfortable with. Is he, was, he, was he more comfortable with like playing the... Because you know, he's going to play this sort of like, Irish peel, sending black all the way down to rope. Is he more comfortable playing that shot or the rush from red to the hook, red to plot, if he'd actually peeled, mm. peeled it? Tight hoop for Tom, is in uh, very that's close. I think that's the shortest hoop he's yeah. had all the whole game. <laughs> to be fair, he's done well to run them, so I'll, g I'll yeah. give him props for that. But in my mind, I'm just not wanting to run those. Yeah, well, I'm just not wanting to have to attempt hoops from that distance, like a you know a exactly. yard in front. Exactly. If I do I'm, wonder whether it's just been due to the. Um, Change in lawn speed with the, with the weather that he's, he's not he's, necessarily struggling to adapt to, but just having it taking a bit more precaution. If you know you're going to run them, then yeah, why take the mean. risk? Yeah, yeah, that's a fair point. Have we, another is aspect it, of it is all of his all of his home approaches have been from like two, uh, th you know three to four yards. So yeah, the pioneers haven't been a yard straight, have they? No, they've always been like five yards away from the hope. Mm -hmm. Looking good. Yeah, he's looking fine here. Yeah. Ideally, probably one bit closer because if, you know I think the worst worst case scenario here is he actually ends up dribbling at black and nudging it through the hoop. Okay. So ideally, with this shot, you want to be as close as possible. Yeah. Yeah, he's fine. He should be fine then. Yeah, he's fine. And red's gone to a nice enough place that he doesn't really need to worry about where blue runs to, does he? Nah, because he'll just turn around and hit red. Yeah. And he's fine. This is this is probably the most, one of the more critical shots here, because now because it's in the jaws, it makes it a lot easier, but with this sort of shot, there's always potential, especially if you're peeling it from maybe like two feet back, that you end up playing it significantly short, which is uh, it's not too bad. It's good, isn't it? Is it just hilled to the left? It's yeah. I mean, it's quite far left of the hoop. This this is one of the, this is one of the things with the um, quadway hoops, is they're known for getting like really filthy kickouts. Mm -hmm. So instead of just going down straight, they they kick out on all sorts of angles. But to be fair, it could also have been the way that Tom played the shot. So sometimes you can aim it just for a little bit into one of the wires or the one of the wires, so you know it goes straight. Yeah. That's not really an anything ball, is it? It's not really deep, it's not really a side ball. No. I mean, it's going to turn into a deep ball, but quite often when you're sort of deep ball, you want a position where if you run the hoop... Straight enough so you can hit through the hoop and hit it. Worst right? case scenario, if you run the hoop to a point yeah. where you can't actually hit your side ball, you exactly. can turn around and hit the ball in front. Yeah. Oh, I think even as well, you know, side balls, right? So yeah, I think that's side, fine. I think that was probably might have been a little bit short. It's good, yeah. or is it? No, it's, it's oh, it's if you actually look, it's a bit further away than yeah, I slightly it was. angled, about a yard back. Yeah, it's a bit further, further than a yard, down. I think. Yeah, not quite a yard and a half, but it's definitely more than a yard. Irish peel coming up. Possibly the most important shot of this match. Yeah.
it's interesting to see whether or not if he Irish is Irish peels this or just um, looks to looks to approach with blue mm. and just peel with black. I thought it was going to be an Irish, but y you might be right. It is in that sort of zone where you can. It's probably right at the very edge of what I'd be comfortable doing Irish peels on. Mm-hmm. Because also there's risk of like if you hit it too firmly, <laughs> the front ball takes yeah. no wire, purely takes no wire. It could potentially go out. <laughs> yeah. So I think best case scenario, you're looking to peel this from maybe like three to four yards and like jaws blue. Mm-hmm. Again, if you're looking at Irish peel, it really depends on how straight your swing is. Yeah, you need to make sure you're hitting through the middle of this ball, otherwise. Look, go anywhere. Because that's just shown us. That's yeah. turnover. That is I don't think you can hit exactly it. Yeah. And you a bit of emotion there. He's and not happy with that. And I'd be pretty livid too, to be honest. So this is this is this could be a huge turning point. We saw something similar with um, Robert Fletcher last night, didn't we? Yeah. Something yeah. very similar. Oh, yeah, Robert Fletcher. Well, did, that did, was an yeah. Irish peel that Irish peel. was a bit more angled, wasn't it? It was also a lot closer though, maybe mm -hmm. like two, like maybe two to feet, two, two to three feet, as opposed to a bit over a yard. Yeah. But yeah, just a, to be fair, I think Fletcher played it worse. Yeah. It's just middle of left wire. That just clipped the inside, which actually cost him. If he hit the middle of the wire, he might have had a chance of bouncing <laughs> back somewhere back. nice. Yeah, yeah. But he actually just... Because he hit it quite firmly. Yeah, and it just... Yeah, it just clipped the near left-hand wire and then has run across the face of the hoop. And, well, what's he going to do here? Depends whether or not he can see. Yeah, I don't think he can. Yeah, it's probably corner, probably corner two. Um, so let's assume that Rob is going to hit one of these balls that he can see. If, if I was beating me in, I'd probably put money on this. It's only maybe four or five I hope yards. so. Three Give us a bit of excitement. Yeah, yeah, yeah it would agree, actually. Um, and so he'll be looking to play with red or yellow. What will he be looking to play with? Obviously, red's the, the back ball. I'd probably go yellow. Yeah. Because I think you've got an easier pick up for, for doing anything. And what will you look to do? Will he hit red and then roll red to. No, but in, turn term, in terms of the, the okay. plan. Uh, yeah, what's the, what's the plan for. When, he's, when you've made your hoops, what are you planning to do? He looks like he's travelling over to the red to me. But red does have... I mean, black's got a four yard. The red's probably six. Yeah, see, I, I don't know with this. I mean, maybe he could be... Maybe. He could be looking right. I'm just going to pull the balls together as quickly, as quickly as possible. And... Do a sex super. Do a sex super. Maybe I I doubt it, <laughs> but there's poten I mean it's potential there. I'm for me I'm potentially thinking make three hoops with the yellow set of leave Tom misses I finish. Okay. And then you that way you give Tom maybe you give Tom one shot, or you potentially take blue. Again blue it's like I don't yeah because he hasn't gone through one back. Yeah. It's still only probably going he's still only go to four back. So yeah. I mean there's potential yeah. It's, uh, I mean, there's potential that he would just go around and then peg, peg off. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking but that. Ro like blue, You're not fan. blue being on a rover, it's too easy to just get in front and then run it. And even if you don't get the peg, he has hit. So we've got a game on our hands. I'd love to see an audacious sex circle attempt. <laughs> Me too. <actually>. That's, <laughs> what, that's what I'd love to see. Yeah. Uh, something tells me we're not going to get it. But if there's one man who could do it, it probably would be Rob on top form. Yeah. yeah. But I definitely think we'd have a lot of like pretty incredible like scoring lines yeah. from Rob. I'm not quite sure that he is at peak form as we speak, though. You never know. I'm sure he can just click into gear straight away at any point. But at the moment, it's just like it's just his average shot. It's just, it's just solid. Yeah, yeah. So he's left himself a three-yard rush to hoop one here. Yeah, as if he's cho as if he's choosing to make hoop one. Okay. That's not guaranteed. The amount of time he's taken over this shot potentially suggests he is. Yeah. 
he's looking to get. I think he's, he's probably going to make a one from there. Uh, he's also protecting. He could potentially be looking to just get wide from wide from black through who one. And then go for a safe super. Probably. Uh, <laughs> no, he's making the hoop. He's not lined up the yellow. The rain's really coming down now. I don't think Rob will be liking this. I don't know, I wouldn't be. No. Stop shot approach coming up. Played it nicely. Two foot hoop. Already he's got close to the most of Tom's approaches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Tom, uh, Rob's played with so much more touch and control. Yeah. So and run what? this to black or, or think, run it to yellow? I think it's sort of, yeah, sort of anywhere within that sort yeah. of area because then, you know, if you. Oh dear. Yeah, it's not ideal for Rob. No. I mean, <sighs> yeah. I do think it's one of um, the problems with Rob's technique is as he looks to hit a little bit firmer, he sort of uses a little bit more body momentum. Yep. Um, whereas one of the things you genuinely want to do is like when you're looking to hit, especially firmer, you keep you want to keep your upper body still. Mm -hmm. I like to think of it as like well, like golf, right? If you lift your shoulders, you're missing the ball completely. Whereas in croquet. We just slightly miss hit it, but yeah. it's still the same sort of the same sort of idea. This is just black and yellow. Make a leave and finish when Rob misses. Hopefully, there's a good time. Give him a max shot. Mm-hmm. Rob, I'd be quite frustrated right about now. Yeah. He's not one to show much emotion, but he certainly looked at looked at the hoop after the shot as though, what have I just done? Because <laughs> that was a golden opportunity to do something that he potentially wasn't getting. This could be going wide from the red. Uh, it, oh, oh. I nah, don't think, I think it is. Right. It's just open. If that was if that was half a yard further, look. That's that would have been, would have been close. Not so ideal. That's gone half a yard further, he's in trouble. Yeah, he's alright there. And this would be just going back towards partner. Yeah. Leaving a rush or just making sure that you don't leave a double? Or leaving a rush. Though so you could potentially also just leave them like maybe a yard apart on the boundary. Just yeah. you know Rob's shooting at something. It'll probably be good. Well potentially. He's not. gonna lift yellow, isn't he? Oh sorry, not lift yellow, but shoot yeah, with yellow. Yeah, shoot with yellow. Yeah, I think if you know your opposition's gonna well it's interesting because you could opt to just let you take the ball that he wants to play with or you just take the shorter shot because yeah. you've just gotta hit. left this quite a long way away if he's looking to leave a rush there's I think we might see him go off the boundary here or, or he could just leave a double if he yeah. didn't but if he's yeah, if you, if you, I, I yeah. just I think there's so if he comes off the west boundary here where he's left the red is almost he's certainly gonna leave a double, double for sure so that's not gonna work um, no so the score is kind of blue is currently on Rover. Yeah. And black is for the pig. And yellow is for one back. We're going to get a good angle here of whether there's any doubles. Mm, it's, yeah. Maybe yellow can't see them, but if it can, that is a huge double. Yeah, but it's not. It's not. Again, it's one of the dangers of looking to, you know, play. Play, trying to put a ball, yeah. The last shot of your leave, you want to be moving it maybe a foot at most. 
and putting it seven yards, dribbling it, kind of dribble out the front of blue to give a rush. Is that a double? Well, there's about a, probably a ball wider gap than you'd like in between the two, but it's just it's just a target, you know? Yeah. <laughs> from yeah. from this range, that is a target. Yeah, Rob, Rob probably takes this. I, th I think he will be shooting it's in the middle of this. Aims for the middle, yeah. This I, is, yeah. If he goes through the middle, just tell yourself you hit a good shot. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's a huge target. Yeah. And, and Rob doesn't hit the, hit the ball with so much pace that he's, he'd be worried about, like, you know, that he's going to go through the like, There's potentially a lot of hill. There's a lot of hill. Yeah. Potential for his, for his shot to hill. Mm -hmm. No, I really fancy this. This just looked massive when I went over there to have a look. Let's see. Yeah. Big, big shot for Rob. It's not going through the middle, is it? Oh, it, it is. is. Oh, no, it's no, held no, on to the black. On, yeah. <laughs> it was it. going through the middle. That, that was, was going through was the going middle. middle. <laughs> yeah, nah, held, on, held on to the black. Shot. Look at this again. This is. Yeah. Start probably starts at blue. Yeah. Starts hitting hill, into the middle. Hill, then takes a massive hill, hill, hill now hill, into the black. Boom. Centre ball. <laughs> What can I say? It's just a good shot. You meant it, didn't you? Well, it was a good shot. Again, this is this is you know at this sort of level because I, I did the same thing against Rob. He's got himself a corner cannon. There you go. What more could you ask for? <laughs> what more could you ask for? Um, again, this was sort of this is the danger with again when you're playing these top players is you give them too much too good of a sh target. Rob's missed a couple of seven eight yarders. You know, obviously a couple of short hoops, but he gave you know you give him too good of a target, a little bit of luck, and you know he's back into it. So we're just going to see Rob make three hoops and a leave here, aren't we? I I would assume so. Now this short sort of shot he's playing now scares me quite a lot, but he'll have he'll be really happy as well. He'll, he'll, be, he'll yeah, Rob, Rob will be fine with this because. I mean, Rob's been playing so long, being able to play, he'll be able to play a cannon, no problem. Yeah, and where's, obviously Blue's hoping to go near one back, but where's, where's where can you expect to put Black? To anywhere, yeah, yeah, down to, Okay. all the way down. It's gone a bit far. No, no, that's pretty spot on. It's, you want to, because then from here, he's obviously looking to get a he's rush. He's going to go to the red, Blue, isn't he? yeah, he's then seen mm -hmm. Blue to three back, going to red, and then, you know, he's already on sort of the rush line. Yeah. Um, so even if he plays it short, like a yard short, a little bit long, like when he doesn't hit the ball, he's probably going to end up with some form of rush. Is it fair to say this is game on? Well, potentially, Tom's going to end up with one shot, one more shot. Well, we do need be, to see uh, a we do need to see a slight increase in level from Rob to ensure Rob, that's the case. Rob should start starts run, here. Start running hoops, right? Yeah, it starts here, I think. A nice shot here, giving him a forward rush. Yeah. Even if he didn't give us a forward rush, he'd probably no, be fine. Yeah. But, but uh, this could be a confidence booster, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, yeah lovely. He's, he's made sure of that. He's sacrificed the rush, but... Mm -hmm. So what, we're going to see a roll here down into corner one, putting a ball to... Potentially just taking off. Then he won't have a three-back by now, or is he... Mm, it, no, because but Tom he... wants to play with... Oh, no, uh, well, he needs a three back pole. Yeah, send Red over. Again, it's not ideal make making it off partner, partner, but if you're sitting in the NSL, then you rush Black over anyway, and you just put it in, vaguely in front of three back. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, vaguely in front of four, or out the back of three back, and you're sort of fine. Or, you know, you could look to play the role. I want to see a role there. The thing is, like, do Rob. Entertainment value. Yeah, 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 I'll give you that. Yeah, we're going to see good players play good shots, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The only issue with you know here is like Rob hasn't spent a whole lot of time on the lawn recently, you know, over the last like, and he's no, he's looking to play the role. He hasn't played it, spent a whole lot of time on the lawn, so this is but but the blue is not aiming bang at three back, is it? Yeah. Maybe it is. I just can't see. Oh, he's left himself a three yarder. But if he gets this, yeah, as yeah. long as he hits this, you're fully expecting. Yeah, yeah. The, the hoops made and a nice little leave at the end. Yeah. And you give, and then you force Tom to hit something. To hit something, knowing that potentially he might not be getting another shot if he yeah, misses. Yeah, that's, that's exactly it. Yeah. He needs to hit this. Shot. Does so in the middle. Hopefully, we're just starting to see Rob finding his gears. Yeah, a bit of life. Yeah. 
because he's definitely struggled so far in this game. Well, a couple of nice shots in the last few minutes. Yeah, for sure. What's he debating here? Where he wants red to finish. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, more or less. What would you like? I think I'm probably sitting a nice wee bright leaf, to be honest. Put in black at the out the back of. Potentially out the back of hoop one. He's probably going to see in blue, just nice and close to blue, though. Sorry, red, nice close to blue. Yeah. It's a nice wee rush on black because you still want to even though blue is not a great pioneer you still want to be making three back off blue mm -hmm. um, but with red nice and close you're just making sure of it because you're going to give yourself maybe a two foot rush at worst maybe a one, you know, a one foot rush yep so he's definitely giving himself a slightly long rush on black to two back but not that it matters he's still put that bit of foot in front Trade here to see what kind of leave he sets for. Ideally, you know, if it was, let's say, I mean, for we know, you know, he might choose. Yeah. If he makes like an NSL, then he's still leaving like blue at three back, which is the ball that you want to move. So that's not completely ideal. So I'm, I'm quite intrigued here to see what he chooses to do. Gave himself a nice way forward trip. You don't fail those. Not very often. Disappointed when you do. Oh, livid. More than disappointed. <laughs> I do remember back in like the last Melbourne Worlds during block play, the hoops were so hard that I ended up failing three back on lawn two, I think it was. Lawn two at Carnley twice from about an inch in front <laughs> because all I wanted to do all I wanted to do was, run, was trying to set in any cell I just wanted to run mm -hmm. it by like a foot no more from about, an, about two inches in front and failed it both times and failed it twice when you have that happen to you that's when you get the yips <laughs> I was, uh, like we ended up seeing last night when Rob was playing, I think, was it, was it Wilkinson, was that his name? Yeah. Yeah, Wilkinson had the yips and he wasn't even playing the shot. <laughs> uh, so, no, that was so funny. Yeah. The yips effect, yeah, effect, yeah, could affect well, anyone it? at any time. It was like a, a two yarder or something. A good yard and a half, yeah. but angled, and Leecher had to run, like it was a th I think it was three back, like mid, mid triple. And we're sitting next to Robert and he's half he, off. He's, he's a yip, he almost jumps out of his seat <laughs> yeah. as he hits it. So at least if, you know, next time you're playing Mr. Wilkinson, at least you know, like if he ends up with a yard, long, yard and a half long hoop, he's probably not making it because he's probably going to jump a foot in the air. <laughs> Poor Rob. He's had a brilliant tournament though. He's coming from the qualifier, one of the qualifiers to make it to the knockout. Yeah, that's a good result. That's I think result. he won, and to qualify actually, he won, I think, six games in a row in the qualifier. Yeah, it's quite Because he started on naught out of three, and six was the qualifying number, and he got six in a row to qualify, and then turned up and got out of his block as a number nine seed, so very impressive. Yeah, now this is interesting. I'm not entirely sure what Rob's looking to do here to be honest. Oops, he's he's going to put red on. Yeah, rush on red to the, is that to the corner? Some excitement. Yeah, I'm a bit, I'm, oh. What is going on? Oh, yeah, putting green into the corner. Oh, yeah. He's just run the hoop again. Uh, he's potentially looking. Yeah, this is interesting. He. 
Virginia, so he's got red into that corner. He could potentially be looking to um, chuck basically red and red and red and oh sorry, black and blue halfway on the east and west boundary, and then potentially chuck yellow into corner. Okay, corner two. Because at least then it would make it very difficult for. Um, on to make Tom to Rover. actually if he hit. I mean he gives away a short shot but it makes it really difficult to actually make yeah make Rover and then peg out. Yeah. <clears throat> I think this shot here will is gonna probably show us what kind of lady he's looking to yeah. see it. Some big moments coming up in this semi final I think. The next five minutes is gonna be pretty, pretty crucial. Yeah, pretty critical. You have to think that if Rob can steal this game from the Jaws of Defeat, he's going to be... Well, up 2-1. Yeah, up 2-1. 2-1 two, two up, having thought you're going 2-1 down, you're going to have yeah. all the wind in your sails. And yeah. That's, yeah, you, yeah, that's for sure. I think that this is a huge, huge, huge moment in this match and in the whole event. So he's just choking, he's choking blue max distance, west boundary. Okay. This is interesting, yeah. Starting to come towards corner two. Yeah. I suppose it really doesn't matter where you put blue because Tom's probably going to look to hit with blue, so black yeah. is the more critical ball for sure. Mm -hmm. So this in. is quite short, isn't it? Yeah. Looks like yeah, it looks like he's trying to chuck black into corner two. But it just feels as though I think the he could make the shot quite a lot longer for blue. And I, think, I guess if you're shooting at black first, then I think Rob probably doesn't mind that. No, because you know, it's like it's going to be so much more yeah, difficult. How you, actually, how you make yeah, peg out and yeah, everything? Yeah, yeah, you're going to have to play some huge pass roll. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And also because if, if blue just hits him towards black, or the advice, well if black goes for blue. Yeah, this is interesting. What's this? This is just going to be going to... Seven to eight yards down the boundary, down the... He looks like he's a little bit boundary. further than that, I would say. Yeah, he's given himself for quite a long... Yeah, yeah. I think that's a ten yarder. Well, and it's, it's going to need hitting. I think the idea is, for Rob, is that if Tom, even if Tom hits, mm -hmm. he's got a pretty hard yeah. pick up. Yeah. Is there any chance we see Tom hit and just make a leave? That's probably that's probably what he'll end up doing. But for Rob, you think in this situation that you know, yeah, that's another shot. Of, that's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the goal, right? I just want another mm -hmm. shot. I want another opportunity to hit and finish. Whereas I wouldn't say this is probably you know, assuming. I mean, if Tom misses, so taking the shortest shot probably at red. Yeah. So yeah. the safest option here would be to shoot a black, but then it makes any potential. No, the safest bet would be to shoot at yellow, because then he force, it forces Rob to play with his fullback ball. But he's take, Tom's basically going for the win at all costs here, and he's taking on the red. Yeah. So it's a this is a short shot, so there's that, there's that sort of justification for it. He's still got to play some good shots here. He's missed. Yeah, that's not ideal. He didn't like it. Um, the danger there, though, was if he missed, if he missed on the left side, he, he left Rob a, a rush to yellow. Yeah, and then Rob croakes it, rushes it up a few yards, croakes that in lawn by three yards, goes, gets a rush from yellow to black, sends you know yellow in front, of, vaguely in front of hoop two, and he's you know rush to one. Yeah, and then probably it's not too hard to dig a stand to triple out of that. Now he's got to do some work. 
and let's see where, what sort of mode he's in. What are you expecting? It's not easy, is it? No, given that yellow, yeah, given where yellow is, it's not the easiest shot in the world, but he's probably going to, so he'll be looking to see him, he'll be, well, hit black, see him, oh, sorry, blue, hit, see him blue probably up towards, uh, probably halfway between um, hope three and the boundary, just because it makes that split a lot smaller, um, mm -hmm. and he's probably going to look to try and get it vaguely and, you know, behind, it doesn't necessarily have to be perfectly behind yellow, but it's got to be cuttable to, you know, maybe sort of out the back of hoop two on the boundary, because then he can take off to black and take black up to. Um, and in terms of the defensive options, is he going to look to leave black there until he's got a break going? No, I think he's sort just of going just to go now? for it. Or, well, here the other option here was to actually, yeah, which, which is what Rob's doing now, is just play the takeoff. Yeah. Um, because it's a much easier. Straight to one, and then that's not uh, reached. He's, he'll be going straight oh, to black. The lawn. It's off the lawn. No, no. He'll be cut, he'll cut this to black. Yeah. This is going to be. Yeah, you're going to have to hit this fairly hard. Yeah. With, well, with the rain this power. happen. Yeah, for sure. I think you know when you're when you're full foot. Okay. A lot of players in this situation are probably going to need a standard triple to finish. Mm -hmm. I mean. Tom's proven the kind of what can happen when it comes to, with delayed TPs, and they can they can end up all over the place. It's not ideal, is it? No, it's not. We're going to see another takeoff here. Probably, actually. A so slightly thicker one, knocking yellow into towards hoop two, or potentially not a massive distance, maybe like a yard or so. Yeah. Um, just because in this situation, it's like you don't want to send it off the lawn. No. You don't want to add an extra variable to account for. I can't remember whether there's any hill here. I think there might, there, think there might must, be. There must be. We saw that we well we saw the um, the lift not the, the lift, the hit him earlier. Yeah. That moved probably a good foot towards the boundary. So I think there's gonna be a little bit in this. Yeah. Yeah, this this here is quite a critical shot. It's also a difficult one as well. Yeah. But if he, even if he doesn't get a rush, he can still set a good leave and and sending black up to hoop, sending black up to hoop one means Tom's going to have to use his peg ball, and so even if he hits, it still gives Rob another shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, That's, he doesn't want to give <laughs> Tom another shot. No. Um, no this think, is a bit of a thicker takeoff than maybe you were expecting. I think. I think I he's going to play into this a little bit. I think it's just because Rob's probably better at his croquet strokes than I am. <laughs> I'm looking is to it possible it. he can go on the in lawn side of black and then cut it up to hoop one? Makes, it, makes Back the yourself cut. to yeah, approach yeah. And, and run a hoop, a good, a good hoop to start. Or I mean, it makes it a much more difficult shot, but there's, yeah, there's potential there because then you know you're fielding and you're fielding and yellow quite a bit and just sort of going for it, aren't you? This is going to heal. This is going to heal. So it has moved a tiny bit, but he just left it a bit short again. This is yeah. pointing at hoop two. I think this is right on the limit of Rob's power to get this anywhere near hoop one. I think we might see this end up near over. Yeah, I think it'd be right actually. But again, the most important thing is to you know, have have the innings here. Yeah. If you've got the innings, then you know, even if you don't make a hoop, you can still look to set a good lead. Mm -hmm. Which is perhaps what he's just doing. Is, yeah. Yeah, like like I talked about earlier, lift shots are the big momentum shift that changes, right? So even though he's, you know, right, he's chucked this vaguely into corner three and he'll probably yeah leave it there and that'll be sort of his leave or set a rush going somewhere. Um, but whatever shot Tom takes on is still is gonna be a twenty to twenty five yarder. Maybe the you know Yeah, rather than rather than 15, a fifteen. Yeah. Yeah, or the 12 yard that he did take on. So Rob needs to ensure that he doesn't make the same mistake as Tom here and leave a nicer double. Yeah, yeah. which I don't think he Rob is going to make sure. He that. shouldn't make that mistake, I wouldn't have thought. And I think also, like, there's a good chance that Tom just takes on any shot with blue and just looks to finish. Um, you know, because it's so close, just got to hit. You know, probably shoot it, shoot it full for his balls, mm -hmm. hit, finish. Um, but. He's still yeah. got to dig that black out. Alright, but the, the big thing is like the shot from blue at 
yellow or red is going to be. This is a long shot. Yeah, so this is again one of the things that Tom should have come and should have done. And you have a look, get behind yellow, have a look and see what kind of shot you're giving away. Depending on where you put the balls, you want to again avoid giving away and form a double. Make sure you're only giving single ball targets. Yeah, a nice easy shot, straight off the lawn the spot you wanted to put it, nothing too difficult, you know, there's no risk of moving away a, a big double. Here we go then. Yep, blue and black. It gives Tom, if Tom hits, it gives him the best chance of finishing. He doesn't mind it. No. no. Tell by, by language that, yeah. was, that was never hitting. That, I, I haven't seen much of him this week, but that looked like he went at that pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah, I'd agree. And then this probably gives, um, I think it gives, to be fair, Rob can rush yellow in front of, probably won't, he'll probably rush us to the boundary, Three. or even just nudge it in front of group two and take off to the balls on the boundary. He's going to try and get this towards three, isn't he? No? Uh, there's no way, there's not enough room to then send black and blue yeah, towards... Yeah, he hasn't got a hoop two point yet. Yeah, exactly, so yeah. But just nudge that nice close to hoop two, take off to blue and black, get a one foot rush to one. There's potential here that Tom's taking his last shot of the match. Of the game. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, of course. Sorry, <laughs> my bad. Last last shot of the game. Yeah. This is a four yarder. Knee knocker. Yeah, I'd probably miss this. For sure. I panicked. <laughs> panicked and it'll, it'll slide past. Mm. Well, Rob's off Where's the he morning. gone? Yeah, so Rob's off the morning. I wonder if he's potentially gone to do something like drive the grip on his mouth. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking that. It's, again, it's a pretty critical shot and you wouldn't want to miss it just because you've got a wet slippery handle. He didn't actually go into the tent, I don't think. No, maybe he did, but... Lovely angle here. Ball. Excellent technique, as always from Rob. Never missing. The um, American contingent haven't been um, heard for a while now, have they? No, I've not heard any loud applauding. They appear to have gone a little bit quiet. Maybe they're fearing the worst as well. I know I would be. Yeah, there's, there's an instant chance here to, to pull out, you know, to dig out a standard triple. Yeah. Yeah, nice little one foot rush to, or maybe two two foot rush to to hoop one. This is a big shot. Yeah, ideally you want this anywhere within three yards, is, I'd say is a good shot, but, mm -hmm. you know. Oh no. Yeah. He's ended up. Yeah. It's not going to be too bad, it's a good pace. 
It's a nice pace. Maybe that's just going to be a takeoff, isn't three it? Three yard takeoff, two yard takeoff. Yeah. Yeah, about three yards, isn't Again, it? Again, though, he's takeoff. making making the hoop off the ball that Tom doesn't want to play. So a little bit less pressure. True. But yeah. now, I think Rob's got himself into a situation now where he's just looking to finish. Anything else is a is a failure. Yeah, no, I'd agree there. This has been his best chance. Yeah. All match. All game to, you know, all game to sure. finish. Finish. Is there any chance that after this, he might play a thick takeoff here and try and rush black over back towards blue? Or is he just going to... Just make it, I think you're just... I mean, he might. He might really fancy it, which I think he might be playing a bit of a thick takeoff, but... It's a little bit thicker than a standard takeoff. Yeah, but... I think ideally, because he probably wants a rush. No, it's just pretty standard. This is going to be a yard. A yard in front. Huge shot. Yeah, because Rob has so, yeah. not been shooting well. Like, this long is, hoops have been a bit iffy from Rob. This is a big test of where where he feels he's at with his game, I think. Um, Again, he's a yard in front, though. In front, I think it's quite important. Yeah, but we saw earlier that when he did get to this position, he just hit it a bit too hard. Cause he yeah. was, there you go. He's absolutely really fine. Yeah. Two swings, straight through. A few claps from the crowd. I think in the tent next door to us, there's quite a big English gallery perhaps <laughs> supporting. Um, well, he's the last, the last English player left. Yep. Yeah, and of course, as, uh, you probably, I don't know, speaking as a non-USA player, I probably want to avoid an, an, an all-US final. Hmm. Just keeps everyone a bit interested, doesn't it? If, if you've got... If, if you knew the US was watch, just was guaranteed to win it, regardless of which player, I don't think it'd have the same kind of appeal, to be honest. But maybe that's just me. I reckon some of the US fans would be pretty happy if the final was both. They probably were, and, and, yeah. and, and in the spirit of good nature, competitive, <coughs> competitiveness, and competing between countries, I hope that isn't the case. Per personally, well said. <coughs> um, yeah, Rob's played, but yeah, that last cross stroke, big cross stroke, was a little bit interesting. Black short, ended up, yeah, but it's four yards short. So we probably get this is a bit angled. It's probably more angled than he'd want, but I don't think it would be any issue. No, so we've got what? Should still be fine. Five or six shots here, which could d massively determine the outcome of this game. I would still expect Rob to finish a delayed TP, even if it came to that. Mm -hmm. But from yeah, definitely from this position, it's you're ideally wanting to dig out the peel, the fullback peel after three. Yeah, he's just being made to think about it. What's he looking at? Just where he wants to run red to. So. Where it's going to end up, yeah, on the boundary. Interesting, isn't it? I think ideal, yeah. You probably just run up to the boundary, nudge, nudge yellow, and then just play the role trying to put yellow in front of the hoop. Look at how wet his jacket is. He is soaked. Yeah. It's gone shiny. It's virtually sodden. Roll will be hoping that this might be one of the hardest shots he has to play in the rest of this game. On, on, yeah, I think you might be right there, actually. You'd have to wonder if... Yeah, again, what kind of effect the rain is having. Cause, I mean, that did play, that, yeah. It could be potentially the reason why he's ended up with an angled hoop. Yeah. Maybe there's a bit well, of pooling of water. to run it with control. He's happy. He was a bit afraid that might have been going into the into the yard line just yeah. to make it shot a bit further. He's asking yeah. to sit down. Because you don't, again, because it's of fine. the angle, I'm sure, again, trying to put yellow in front of in front of four back and then trying to go to blue. Yeah. You don't want to really rush. Oh. Well, He's going to use black here, yeah, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And what? Knock black in, into, into the corner. Pump it out, go into the blue, and make the hoop off blue. Probably the best chance at digging out a standard TP, but it does mean he would also he would have a very long rush. He's just taking off it. No, he just take. Yeah, I think he's conceded. He's trying to sort of try and trying to avoid playing any sort of big Kroger strokes where things could go wrong. So he'll be looking to get a rush behind blue, croquet that in, and then load for going to black with like just a nice short little stop shot. And I think one of the big things, again like, like I mentioned earlier, appeal like sort of feeds off your brake, so if your brake is not in good health, 
then there's always potential that the peels just feed off it too much and then that's what puts pressure on the brake and there's potential for it to break down. Yeah. Does it need to go to get behind it? Yeah, he's fine. It's a nice it's shot. Okay, he'll be happy with that. Yeah, so this is where he's going to try and play a couple of good croco strokes, a couple of good hoops, and then have nice tight pioneers and then look to go for a peel. Because all of a sudden there's, there's less risk involved. Yep. I sort of thought he might hit that a bit close to the lag there. Did have a bit of a cut, it's probably just conceded defeat there, was a, that was his best shot. So he was just looking to play sort of a quarter roll. Get there behind black. Even well, a bit more of a drive, but yeah. So nice. this is a, a blue's just travelling a little bit past the hoop, but that shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, no, nice and closer. It's more yeah, than good the, enough. The red was the key there. Yeah, yeah. Get it. Yeah, your rush is always the most important. Sort of plan at you know most important aspect of any shot. Yeah, so here he's played a couple of good shots till something gives break back together. And I would expect him to, after making hoop three, send black down to hoop five, and then probably send yellow past blue, and then croquet it back yep. down to in front of, um, in front of four back. Um, I mean, the other the other way to do it would be to rush yellow over, get a rush sort of on yellow towards fall back, rush it over and then take off to blue but again going back to the idea that if you know if sort of a positive way to play or, or a better way to play is to make sure your strike score doesn't like you travel the minimal di minimum distance possible mm -hmm. um, and so you know you think of long takeoffs as like they're a necessary shot that quite often you are your only option but if you have a, if you have the balls under control, you can look to see. So that's the position we were talking about earlier. That's, that's where that's you want it. black. That's it. That's where you, yeah. That's exactly where you want black. So <laughs> after making four, you rush blue down to. So he hasn't got this where you wanted it. No, because I think yeah. Again, he's ended up having to. A little cut. Yeah, but he should be fine because what well, you know, Rob's got good big croquet strokes, so he'll just seem he'll be able to just stop shot blue down. Maybe two yards to the west of four back, and then just rush it down to maybe two yards in front, and then take off to black. Yep. Or he'll again croquet black, black blue down, get a rush on yellow south of black, and then stop shot it down in front, getting a rush on black. But yeah, like I talked about earlier, like the most important shot really is the rush out of hoop five. So that's why like loading loading five to where he has is like the is the most critical part of his sure. delayed TP. Mm -hmm. Just another thought, if this goes all the way, given it's four fifteen now, we're looking at a pretty late finish if this goes to five. Fifteen. This way has been games are too interactive. This has just, been you what? should just not make errors and just hit and finish. They've been playing for must be over six hours now, and they're what two two and three quarter games in. You have to wonder, like here we go, there we go, six yeah. hours twenty nine minutes on the match time. Six hours. Yeah. This one's been two hours. It doesn't feel like we've been sitting here for two hours. That I've enjoyed it so much. That's why I'm starting to feel a bit tired and like I need a beer to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, that um, tournament dinner at seven o'clock is looking uh, in danger if this goes to five games. No, they'll just have to. They can just. They can just they come can in and have a, Yeah, they can just come <laughs> in and have a snack and then get back out and play their last game <laughs> in the dark and the rain. <laughs> yeah. We could all stand out there on the sideline with like our phone lights on and <laughs> light it up for them. I don't know what time it does go dark at the moment, but if this weather's not going to help it, no. Nah. You know, you have to think like the longer the match goes on, who does that? Who, what, who, whose advantage do you think that plays into? I think it's going to play into Rolf's because the longer it goes on, the, just the, the more, yeah, right? the, the the more experience comes into play. I mean, 
how many games in Tom's life is he going to have played that are going to have lasted, you know, eight, nine hours potentially? Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I don't know, but I'm going to hazard a guess that he hasn't played very many nine hour matches. Or, or best of fives. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Like, I've probably only ever played a, hand, a handful of best of fives, and they're a, they're a very different, a very different game to. It's tough to get in the, mi- in the mindset to, yeah. to keep, keep keep plodding along. Yeah, no, exactly. All day. So, I think again, the more you play, the more like what your average shot, the level of your average shot, how you know, yeah, the more important that is. Yeah. So here, Rob's again, maybe maybe feeling a bit uncomfortable with these hoops. He's failed to get a, a rush out of hoop five. So again, he, well here he's had to, he's having to play a nice little sort of half roll split. The black's coming up a tiny bit short, but nothing that will phase him. No, it should be, it should be fine. And red at yellow is nice. The one mm. thing I presume you're going to say in a minute, that the position of black means if he doesn't get the peel here, he can't do it on he his way to one back. He can't go, go back to one back. But again, like you don't need to make a contingency for that if you are pretty confident that you're actually going to get the peel yep. going to six. And given where he's put... Black again. He's probably going to want like a two foot rush, but given where he's given blue, he's also got the option of like having a slightly longer rush and just peeling going straight. Yeah. And that's another sort of important. It's sort of another aspect that I suppose I haven't talked about enough when it comes to completing like TPs is the moment you can peel going straight, you're drastically more likely to actually complete the peel. Yeah. Um, and if you complete, you know, the most again, I don't know it sounds, I don't know, it sounds like a bit obvious. But the most important part of completing peels, oh, you know, TPs, is actually just getting the peels. Yeah. So actually, we saw Rob play that really straight rather than we yeah. a bit of that, just to focus on the peel. Yeah, and he ran it pretty cleanly. So now we've got, I mean, we can't get a picture up, but the balls must virtually be in the exact same position they were after Tom did, Tom did the fullback peel in, yeah. in his previous yeah. break. Yeah, more or less. It didn't quite finish, so... We're going to see here how Rob plays it differently and whether it expects to be, be a little bit more tight. Um, a little bit more controlled. Well, yeah. It's got a nicer a nicer hoop. Having said that, the last few of his hoops have been a bit further than you might expect from him. Yeah. They've still been within like a foot, uh, like a foot and a half. Yeah. But yeah, no, I'd have got, yeah. It's it's, a he's not getting any rushes. No, but I think it's, yeah. I think, yeah, again, I suppose it's an experience thing. You sort of realise the hoops that you need a rush out of. So, like, hoop five is a must. You need a rush out of hoop five, you need a rush out of three back on a delay TP, and a rush out of two back. But again, two back is easy because you're rushing north. Yeah, of course. Um, but, yeah. Take off here? Yeah. So, we'll be looking to take off. Croquet yellow down to two back. Yeah, yeah getting a rush on black to make his hoop. I like to think this is probably he'll probably finish this because again the the most important peel in the TP is the fullback peel. Once you get a fullback peel, there's so many easy opportunities to peel Penalt, and then once you get put, you know, Penalt is significantly easier to peel, and then Rover as long as you get it nice, as long as it's nice and close to Rover early PLE, then Rover's pretty easy too. It's just for the fullback peel that pe- it can, that can trip people up. Like if you don't jaws there, it'll get it peeled. Yeah, you might have put. Is he going for? <laughs> is he been... I think blue is not in a good place. Maybe no, it's okay. I think he might be. He might be okay. He could just be. He could just go for the peel now. And you, you would wouldn't sacrifice you? The... you would. I would. Yeah, you, maybe. You'd, and think, you'd consider it, wouldn't you? And sacrifice the two back pioneer. Yeah, I just don't have one. No, he's got a four yarder here. But four as we've yarder. been speaking about, black's in the right place where you want black. If you're yeah, going to have a yeah. four yarder, you can just yeah. be you confident can... that if you hit this, it's going to go in front of the hoop. Exactly. And even if you end up with the two yard approach, that's yeah. still, you know, it's still not the end of the world. It's where, yeah, and as it is, it's a yard, you know, yard, 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 yeah. But over that's the yard. advantage of having your pioneer in the right place. Yeah, because then if, cause <clears> if, if his pioneer was like a yard in front and he ended up with the same sort of shot, same distance, he's going to be four up. or five yards away from the hoop. Yeah, yeah. at best of two and a half. And then you start to see the hoop shot becoming a yard rather than a foot. Yeah, because this is less than a foot. Yeah, and then and then that's when you're more again. It's, it's those little percentages. 
mm -hmm. you're more likely to break down. Not necessarily, necessarily saying you will, but all of a sudden it turns like it turns into a turn that you might finish eight, nine times out of ten to a three, four out times out of ten. I think that's again, it's the big difference between like a player who's going to um, complete TPs. You know, who's going to who regularly completes TPs and then, you know, difficult TPs, and a player who might complete a TP once every, I don't know, five to six games, you know, eight to nine games. Mm -hmm. If you're told me you're starting to think about game five, or is it still no, a bit early I, for that yet? I think it's, yeah, I think it's important, to, especially if playing best of five, it's important to always stay. Like in the moment and, and stay ready. So I think the worst thing would be, okay, Rob falls over in like a one foot angled hoop, and then you, well, you'll walk out and miss a full yarder because you weren't psychologically yeah. ready, you know, and you'd mm -hmm. be kicking yourself. And I think missing that kind of shot is like that would be quite mentally it would really weigh on you. Um, here, what Rob's looked to do is, did he just oh, slightly? Uh, it's not quite where he wanted it to be, was it? No, it's not the end of the world. Ideally, probably but he's really happy with the position of black. Something makes again the TPs easier is actually having your escape where you want it earlier. Mm -hmm. So I think Tom might have ended up with his yeah Tom ended up in this position. Tom ended up with his about peg high I think. Yeah. Um, so then he had then he had to croquet peel into position and then he had to rush that into position rush in you know, the escape into position as well. Whereas <laughs> for Robert's already there and then after it's, again like we talked about earlier getting a rush on. Getting a rush out of two backs easy, right? Because you know you're rushing, you're getting a rush north, um, and then if your rush is really close to Penal, then it's only a couple of small Kroger strokes to put them in like perfect position, and then sure. just take off to blue. It also means like having a scape will be early, and you, know, you know getting a good rush out of two back means he can potentially set them up to again peel straight, which means he's more likely to finish the peeling turn, or more likely to get the peel. Yeah, so he's given himself maybe a bit over a yard long rush. And also, if he peels this, if he rushes us vaguely in front of Penol, he's then got the option to peel it as well. Whereas if Black wasn't in position, then he doesn't give himself that opportunity. This is a good shot. Uh, I mean, it's too far to try and peel it, yeah. but just a little croquet stroke, sort of nudging it. I'm intrigued to see where Rob puts this because normally speaking I'd want it probably like just a foot um, east east, yeah. east of Penalt. Just because again, same thing we talk about our pioneers. Like if you end up two yards short, you can just dribble at it and just nudge it in front. Whereas if it's a yard in front a yard in front, then you can't really do that. So Rob's opted to leave it about a yard in front. Which two yards. Do you yeah, two yards? Not east. Maybe he's thinking something slightly different to what you would do. I do think potentially because of like where that ball ended up and sort of the angle of the croquet strokes that he would have had to play, he's opted to sort of play it's a lower percentage way of peeling. He's probably less likely to complete the peel. I'm not saying like he probably will complete it, but he's less likely to if he's peeling, you know, if he's not peeling straight. Um, but it does mean he's more sort of guaranteed to have the opportunity to peel. Because if you do have like peely, like two feet in front, and then you 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 know and you're looking to peel straight like he did at four back, you do need a really good rush out of three back because. Yeah. Your balls aren't in like a loose enough position where if you play a bad croquet stroke, if you don't get a rush and you have to play a big croquet stroke, like there's less room for error. Um, you know, so you, you know if, if they're sort of already in perfect position and you end up two yards away, well you just you're going to end up hitting it out of position. Of course. So. But here I would still expect Rob to. Yeah, see this is one of the hoops where it's like right, I need to have a good hoop approach and I need a good rush. Out of the hoop to make the peel, in the peel before yeah, yeah fall yeah. back more likely. Mm. 
what would you say from here in terms of chances of finishing? Quite high in the nineties. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd give Rob that. Yeah. What, what, what are the key? What are the key shots from here? Obviously, other than the pills. This rush. Yeah. This rush is quite critical. Um. And then again, like I say, the peeling shots obviously, but not to get the peels. I know obviously that's an important part of it, but here you want to, you know, when you look to peel Penalt, you need, again, you need a rush on black. Yeah. Like, getting a rush on black is the most critical part of it. Cause if you don't get the peel, you can always re just resort to straight double. Which is what Tom had to do. Yeah. Yeah, because it ended up a bit. Tom, Tom had a reasonable go at it because again, it ended up in the jaws. You couldn't really, you can't really ask for a better place to be trying to peel Penalt, like doing a straight double from. Yeah. Is that travelling? No, it's good. And see, another thing, another thing with like where blue is, I like to opt to have blue maybe an extra a yard, probably just a yard or half a yard further. Mm -hmm. So that if I end up peeling. Like we end up, if I end up having a rush peel penalt before making penalt yeah. after four, then I can still send it all the way to Rover and still get maybe a yard, yard and a half, two yard rush on blue. Um, whereas if you end up rush peeling it and sending it like two, you know, a yard and a half through the hoop, then you're going to end up with a longer rush, sending it mm -hmm. a longer rush, on, you know, on sure. blue to penalt. But, you know, is it just going to play this as a normal drive, or is it going to be...? I've seen Rob do these shots a couple of times, and he's played both of them just like a drive. You're just backing yourself to have send the control it. over red, getting yellow down to... Yeah, seeing yellow all the way down, yeah, but early. The, but a huge amount of your focus has to be on the red here. Oh, yeah. All, yeah. Once you've sort of like, um, aimed it up, it's like all the focus is, all, is then on red. And how much pull is he going to have to put? It's not going to be a huge amount of pull, is it, that he's going to have to account Probably for? aiming just on the inside of the right wire. Yep. But you're right, not not too much. And this is, again, why it's critical where black ends up, because it dictates how much pull, um, pull you have to peel with. Rightfully taking his time over this shot. Yeah, yeah. I'd be there, I'd be there for a while. Yeah, sent this quite away. And again, I'll admit I've generally would look I generally peel that shot quite gently, but here I suppose it gives them the option and given where blue is, because blue's a good again a good pioneer, gives them the option again after making four back um, then getting a rush down to yellow and then rushing it in front and mm -hmm. taking off to blue um, I think he's looking really good here yeah I think he's yeah He'll, he should finish this and I was hearing Chris and Gavin earlier discussing how they felt as though Tom would have felt as though he should be 2-0 up at the lunch interval. Yeah. I uh, hate to say it, but I think you probably think you should be three dollar up if you thought you should be two nil up. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, you've got to, you know, you end up on Pig and Rover and yeah. you just played one one very average shot to throw it all the way. And yeah, we could be looking at two one. Especially against the likes of like Fulford where, you know, the margins are he's such a good player, the margins are so small, he doesn't I mean he's made a few errors this match but you know, generally speaking, I feel like he's, I feel like he's, I feel like you say he's not playing well, but he's playing well, but he's not playing brilliantly. And you think of, well, what is it? What is it, the level of he's actually capable of playing at? Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, his ceiling is so much higher. Where you know, he's nowhere near it. He's, you'd say he's playing quite averagely, but he's still semi-final of the world's about to be two one up, right? And you think about. I think there's that concern, isn't it? Like if you've got if you've got half chances against him, 
you've really got to make sure you finish yeah, those chances. Yeah, you need chances. to take your chances. Like, you, know, you know, like Tom really needed to finish that because he was up two one. You know, because it's the the I suppose the fear is that Rod could play. He's capable of playing even better. Yeah. I don't think we started to see that this turn. Yeah. It's just going through the motions now. Everything's been very clinical. Yeah. That's lovely. Yeah, I'm not complaining about that. And again, this is one of the most, like, when it comes to a straight road of hill, the most critical aspect of it is making sure you get it there nice and early. And mm -hmm. it's like, you know, within, definitely within a yard, a yard of the hoop, ideally in front. Um, and it just means your percentages of completing the turn just like just go through the roof. And on the other lawn next door, for anyone interested, Callum Highlands just uh, completed a triple to equalise against Nick Parrish. So that was quite an impressive turn, I thought, keeping half an hour on it. <laughs> They're one all in a plate semi final. And on the other lawn, Jenny and Robin appear to be having a bit of interaction. Who doesn't have a bit of interaction on the croquet green? <laughs> no. Perfect. Yeah, shot. So it is. It's one of those niggly approaches that are, they're not hard to get wrong. But it's quite a lot of pressure in at the moment, and that's that's a big. You need to get them done. Yeah, it's a big part of. Um, you know, that's when it comes, you know, that's where I think, you know, it's like, well, how good is your average shot? You know, and that sort of has a big um, sort of impact on, like, your ability to finish turns under pressure. Yeah. Um, because if you all of a sudden you're giving yourself, like, a yard-long hoop, you know, yard-long penult to, to go 2-1 up in the world semi-final, well, I don't care how good of a hoop runner you are, there's always, there's a lot more potential for you to miss that, yeah. you know, because of the pressure. So giving yourself easy shots to finish is like yes, but I think it's a very critical part of it. Whereas like Tom, Tom in like his first break round, even his delayed triple was like it did, he did well to get as far as he did, but he played a lot of a few error shots where he was going to play really really good shots to recover. Whereas Robbie is he's had a lot of easy shots. Yeah. You know, well, just, like I said at hoop two, he probably thought that was. Hoping that was going to be his hardest shot remaining, and I think it probably turned out yeah. to maybe be the hardest yeah, shot. And yeah, 100%. This is just regulation now. He's done really well to do this, especially under this pressure, having, you know, potentially feeling as though he'd thrown away a chance about half an hour before yeah. he got this chance yeah. with the failed hoop one. But, but I also think it's like, you know, it's that sort of championship mindset, right? Always staying, always staying, like, mentally ready. Yeah. No. I suppose also with Rob, like having such a long career and having played so many games, it's like there's probably been so many games where he was like, I've definitely lost this. Yeah. Like it's probably been worse. <laughs> he's probably won games because he's played for so long. He's probably won games where it's been the opposition had one ball for the peg and he still won. You know, and and having had that experience, like yeah, you're always going to be sitting there going like, right, yeah, sure, this is probably it, but you're always going to be sitting there really in case something you know something happens or something unexpected. So I think we're expecting him to finish here what what are you where would you have your um expectations for game four do you think we're going to see a higher level from rob continue and just win easily or do you think tom's going to put up a fight you know i'd hope tom comes out with a lot of aggression you know a lot of aggression <laughs> wanting to you know really take this back but Again, one of the things, you know, again, it's a big thing when it comes to AC is like Tom's just been sat, has just probably sat down for the last yeah. like 40 to 50 minutes. They might take a break here, I don't know. Do you think they might have 10 minutes? This has been a long game and they're both probably pretty wet. Oh, they they might so have 10 right? minutes. Um, Hopefully they take 10 minutes and it gives us yes, uh, so a bit of beer. It gives us 10 minutes as well. Well done, Rob. Yeah, that was impressive. Win. That's a good one. The crowd have gone wild. They at love it, eh? <laughs> they love it. <laughs> Let's see what they're doing. Tom's walking on the lawn. Maybe we're not getting our no, break. No. Oh dear. It looks like they're getting straight, they're getting straight back <laughs> into it. Well, they've realised that it's 4.35. So <laughs> Rob did, do, did that against me. He was like straight into it. They're There's discussing no... now. Well, you, you'd want to, wouldn't you? <laughs> really? Well, I think it depends, right? Because it's like you've got... 
some people I think like to get straight onto it and keep the momentum going, and maybe like fourth is more most people. Whereas like from what I've seen, Reg likes to take his time and has likes to have a break in between. Yeah. So you know, I know I do. I like to have like five ten minutes between games, even whether I win or lose. Oh, you've got one. That's a slider. Luckily, we found someone to go to the bar for us, so we, we, won't, we will survive. We won't um, die of thirst. <laughs> yeah. Right. Rob coming out with a super shot. Uh, now, I think the super shot, super shot opening is one of the. <laughs> I personally think it's one of the most interesting openings um, in the game. Because it's like, how do you respond to it? And. I just opted to go max distance east boundary, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. I, um, had a few super shots against me this week, and... Yeah, what was your line of play? I, uh, returned the favour and put my own super shot out, sort of, <laughs> parallel yeah. on the other side of the lawn, if yep. you looked at it as a... Yeah. And then James, said... James did that against me. And then said, if you really fancy... Hitting hard. Yeah, hitting hard, then, on, then. you can miss and I'll have a ball in bulk and go round. Yeah. And if you dribble, yeah. you're going to heal it off and up, leave me a double. Leave you a double. Yeah, you could ask for more. You yeah, could ask for more than that. I actually, yeah, it worked. Won every game I played it in, so. Uh, yeah, because I think if you're a top player and you hit, again, when you're a, you know, I know, like a high handicap, like a super shot, you take a super shot like, out and you just follow your opposition. Yeah. <laughs> but when you get to, the, I don't know, a scratch or above, or, you know, below, yeah. um, you're looking to hit and go round. There's no following your opposition. You're hitting sure. and going around. So the max distance, max distance on the east boundary. Your thought philosophy is right. I'm just going to give my opposition the longer shot because if they hit, they're going to go around. So therefore, I just don't want them to hit. Which Rob's hit take the long shot from B Bork and has hit. So that's, that's a big, that's a critical shot. He's pushing on now. He is pushing on. That is a ma that is a massive shot. Seeing some sextuples elsewhere. James Deef has had two in the Shield semi-final to beat Gabrielle. Excellent tournament for Gabrielle, but she's been done by a few sextuples there. So you can't really, you can't, yeah. You can't have any complaints. They, they, I think it's James for you, to be yeah. honest. To be fair, against me in the um, top 16 knockout, he, in the last two games, I started, I started shooting quite well. He was contemplating, he, we were talking about after, he was contemplating doing sextuples against me. But... Um, and you've sort of gave him the chance in the yeah. last two games. So, are we going to see Rob really put the pressure on here and get round third turn? I think if if Rob may, if Rob makes it one, I think he's, he's going he's around. Going yeah, around. And, and well, it, like we've said, the you know he's got all the momentum now. It's a it Tom. Was, Tom may feel as though he's had one of his best chances to win a game, which was in the previous game. Yeah, and now he's about he's, he's sat down for the last hour, and now he's probably potentially going to sit down for like another twenty minutes. Yeah, and going to have to come out and hit something potentially to to, yeah. to save save the match when yeah. he was looking at being up two one. Yeah, half an hour, half an hour, no, probably an hour ago now, being yeah. up two one. You have to wonder again psychologically what kind of a, you That's know perfect, isn't it? Yeah, you can ask for better. Nice wee control poop and get a rush. You know, table break, that is, again, one of the most... This is why, like, table breaks is probably one of the best practices. Pra yeah. pra you know, practicing things to practice as an AC player. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, getting, um, having controlled hoops and rushes out of hoops are, like, some of the uh, most important aspects. So if you're Tom and you've just had a narrow defeat in the previous game and now your opponent's potentially going around third turn, what are you thinking? How are you preparing yourself for... Hopefully, creating a switch in momentum towards to, in your favour. How, you, how do you go about yeah, that? It's just like it's like staying, you know, engaged. Yeah. Um, and just ha having some energy and and sort of I don't know some self belief about this you. This is lovely, by the way. Shot. This is lovely. Yellow's oh uh, yellow's good. It's yeah. Probably yeah no it's fine. Um, yeah, I think it's about having a bit of self belief and going out right. I'm I am hitting this. Yeah. There's no. I'll do my best. There's no, I'm going to try. It's, I'm hitting it. Um, you know, if you don't, and you know, if you don't, you sort of live with the result and it is what it is. But you've got to go out and be like, 
this is what I'm doing and I'm going to do it. I think it's a big part of sport in general, is, is two individuals imposing their will on each other, essentially it, through the form of a particular game, whether you're playing, you know, mm -hmm. croquet or, you know, I coach basketball, the same thing. Yeah. You know, football, tennis. That was interesting. I think we're going to see Rob have a few more of these... Um, what, those 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 little hoops. Uh, yeah. Well, in, in his... Uh, he will be hoping not to be crashing through them, but there's going to be plenty more of these little two-foot hoops that we've obviously seen him have a bit of an issue with at times. But. Um. Yes, yeah, so here we are. Another, probably love another lovely big croquet stroke from Rob. And this is what he's built his success on, isn't it? Just the precision play that he's yeah. able to produce it when it really counts. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And stepping up as well when it matters. I mean. I think that's what a big part of uh, yeah, like. All right, when you win in a best of five, when you win the toss, I like to think of it as a um, it's like holding serve in a game of tennis. Yeah. Right. So if you don't, if your opposition, if you win the toss and your opposition wins that game, it's like you've, you know, you haven't, you haven't you've been broken. Serve. You've yeah. been broken, right? Well, like in GC, if you had, but if you won the toss and lost, lost who won, you've been broken. Exactly right, and so now. Even if Tom, Tom can do it, do his best, right? His, and his, probably, yeah, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't be TPOing for, for Rob because Rob's very good tactically. Yeah. Um, but even if Tom hits and goes round, Fulford can then hit and then finish. Mhm. Mm so that's where it's like that's why I like to think of as like holding serve. Yeah. So because Rob won the last game, breaking Tom, it now puts all the pressure on. Well, Rob, even if Tom hits, yeah. Rob can just hit and finish. Are we seeing signs of a loss of belief from Team, <laughs> from team, team USA? Team USA. There, seven of them, they were in the camp, they're and now they're wandering on. back to the bar. Whether that's, that could be at the re request of um, Tom. A bit of space, maybe, I don't know. But yeah, kick them all out. Yeah, but they've certainly become less vocal and now they are leaving. That's interesting, isn't it? Cheers. Yeah, we've just had our drinks delivered to us. It's quite good, actually. We I'm should starting, survive now. I'm starting, I'm starting to feel a bit parched. <laughs> right. Back to it now. This is right where you'd want it, isn't it? I probably want. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. I probably want to rush a little bit further south and then maybe we can rush it sort of behind yellow and give ourselves like a straighter stop yeah. shot but oh, this will be fine, he'll still get this mostly, he should still get it down to hoop six. The more critical one will be when he turns the corner at hoop six and one back because if he doesn't get a rush, if he doesn't get a rush yeah. um, north then it it's becomes, you're gonna have to rush rush a ball to pioneer. Rush it or you're not or you're just or you're gonna stop shot it anyway and just not get it far and just yeah. accept that it's like yeah. seven yards short. I've, I've I've thought about like in this kind of situation. Do you leave yellow two yards short so that even if you don't get a rush, yeah, you're going to be able to still, play the stop shot. Not yeah, you're still going to be able to get it down. It comes back to that having the making sure that the pioneers in a place where if things do go wrong, you've got there's options. Room to work, right? but yeah, you can always yeah. you can always give it a bit more, but you're not going to be able to take take any um, juice off it, are you? Yeah, exactly. Which I think is what Rob Smalley's done here. Mm -hmm. So he's not going to actually have to be able to move it like too far north to still be able to play the stop shot loading two back. Yeah, 
Yeah, because he didn't really need a rush north, he's, he hasn't put the pressure on himself to run a, a nice soft hoop. Yeah. Which is again just one of those little percentage things. How, how often do you see one of the top top players come so close to being in a really poor situation, f fighting back from from no man's land, and then um, you know, and then kicking on and just continuing all the momentum? It happens so often. You know, they, you feel as though people have had had their chances, and then they really start to capitalise. That's what they build their yeah. reputations on. I think a big part of it, especially once you get to the point where you can actually like triple regularly, it's like you know that even if your opposition, even if your opposition, like in that situation, Tom was Rover and Peg, was you know even if even if Fulford was on one and one, he knows he can literally give Tom one shot. Yeah. Whereas you know if you if you're not TPing and just going your classic nine twelve five. You're just going to give your opposition two shots, which against a good shot or top players, there's more than enough to. You will hit one of them, right? Yeah. That's probably gone a few inches further than he wanted to there, really. This is a. Must be cut. Almost rest. a slice. Yeah. Just played it nicely. Yeah. Got it right on the line to be able to control the back ball's line a bit better. Because like even when you're doing a forward break to three back, you need a good pioneer at three back. Yeah. This has been fairly, fairly textbook. Uh, yeah. You can't really have many complaints about how uh, this is this has taken place. I mean, I've been intrigued to see what kind of leave he sets because you've got the option of basically setting a diagonal spread without the ball in the middle. Yeah, that's what I'd be doing. Says, or yeah. some, some ducks. Or a three ducks lead. It is very the... wet, so maybe the ducks, ducks might come out. Personally, I probably would. The only reason for it is I want to put all the pressure on Tom to hit. Like, yeah. If you miss, I am finishing. <laughs> like there's no, you know, there is no ifs, buts, or maybe's. I am finishing. Mm -hmm. Though Rob might hate the, you know, if you play a nice, like, you put the ball on the west boundary on the boundary, which is I think which is what Rob's going to do. Um, it means that if it does mean that if Tom shoots on B balk and hits really well, he's potentially not going around off that because you're going to need a good rush. Yeah. You're going to need a good rush to the ball on the west boundary to get going. Um, Just briefly talk me through the uh, advantage of the three ducks over. It means the diagonal spread with no ball in the middle of the lawn. So the diagonal spread would mean it, it gives you more a defensive option. Because the three ducks is, if your opposition miss, you have a, a pretty easy pick up for a standard triple. Okay. Whereas, if you play the defensive option, it means your opposition can then um, play from b-ball into corner four and not have to give away, and you then have a delay TP. Yeah. But Rob's has proven that he has no problems with delay TPs. But again, it could be, is the like of him finishing a standard TP is probably like, I don't know, 95, 98%, right? Yeah. Um, whereas this percentage of him completing a delayed might be 85. Like, still extremely high, but we are probably talking a 10 to 15% difference. I suppose the positive of Rob going around third turn is he's increasing our chances of getting dinner on time <laughs> and so reducing the chances of the lawn getting flooded. Yeah, no, you're right there. Yeah, I think there's a lot of advantages to having a short game. Yeah, so this is going to be. Well, possibly the most important shot of Tom Bowling's career coming up. Yeah, thus far. So here, Rob will just um, sort of rush yellow off the boundary. He'll set up a nice, he'll take off to behind blue, 
see a nice wee rush over towards the west boundary and then just head off the west boundary um, where the rush is pointing. Hi Pete. Hi Logan. So here we have Pete Trimmer joining me in the commentator's box while Ewan probably runs off to get another beer. Because as we know, that's the most important part of a Kroger tournament, isn't it, Pete? <laughs> Absolutely. Drinking that's after cool. you've knocked out, been knocked out. So Rob's had a nice ball round here. Nice he's, wee third turn. He's, uh, he's the guy, of course, that really developed the um, the super shot ball for the pushing for the third turn ball round. And most players would be having three ducks. I'm not sure whether you've taught people yeah, through this. Yeah, we've taught three ducks, yeah. Whereas, he, whereas Rob plays this differently. He's um, more defensive in a way. Yeah. Um, having the ball off the lawn here. Um, yeah, because I've, I've, I've already made a comment that the so basically the diamond will spread without the ball in the middle means that the defense it gives Tom the defensive shot from B ball, but if Tom then hits, they say his centre ball's yellow, yeah, then it means yellow's potentially going off the bit north south boundary, yeah, or maybe six seven yards further up, which means because red is on the west boundary, he needs a um, he needs a rush across. And then if he's taking off from six to seven yards away from the ball, behind the ball and the boundary, he might not get that rush. Yeah, so I think it's partly that, and I think there's also a benefit that, you know, even if he knew that um, Tom was going to hit the the short shot, or you know, as it's often referred to, the shot from a bulk, um, which is the one he's take, which which is the one, take. Yeah, that's the one that he's taking. Even if he hits this, having that other ball on the boundary all that distance away it just makes him slightly less likely to get going than Rob that where Rob will figure he's a better touch player yeah and having a ball on the boundary yeah, yeah more more experience with going around from that position so that to me looked like Thomas's biggest miss that I've seen today yeah. um, it looks like you probably rushed it to be fair I don't think he yeah. took as long as what he is what he has on other left shots. Right. Yeah. Probably a bit of the pressure, knowing that that was probably that, that's the shot to. If there's any shot to hit, that was probably it. Yeah, some players would take longer over that shot, knowing this might be my last shot. If I miss this, then you know it could go down. Three one. He's perhaps kicking himself for the previous game still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know I would be. Uh, so I did mention earlier about how you've got again. I like to think of if you when you win the to you know the toss right. So when you play first and a best of five, it's like holding. When you win that game, it's like holding serve. Yeah. And Rob winning the last game meant that he then gave him the opportunity to then go around third turn and even if Tom hits and goes around it gives Tom, um, Rob the opportunity to then hit and finish um, so there's I suppose another reason why last game was quite a critical one to win for Tom other than obviously he had a, you know, a one yard Irish peel rover to you know, straight rubber peel to, to, to finish yeah surprising outcome though to be fair we did see a similar shot from Fletcher yesterday against Jose, maybe two feet in front, slightly angled. Yep. And the back ball just plowed right into, I think it might have been the right upright for the hoop. Yeah, so some players are saying that these quadways are just a bit tougher than the previous hoops. And of course they've been reset, so um, yeah, perhaps just a little bit more scary. And that would be backed up by earlier, earlier on Rob had a sort of 40 degree uh, one back but he chose mm. to not even attempt, he played just scattershot instead, which yeah. I was very surprised about. Um, so if you, were, if you were in that position, are you taking that shot of that hoop on? I would have been, mm. yeah. I mean, I, mean um, I would have. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Rob knows the game <laughs> pretty well, so... He'll have, he'll have yeah, I think done his percentages. Yeah, his he's already worked out likelihood of like, yeah, likelihood <laughs> of, of likelihood of making the hoop first. What he's giving away 
if he, you know, if he does a blobber. Yeah. Okay, so he's rushed blue off the boundary there, and he's going to chip that out, um, getting his rush to run, of course. And that looks like a good rush to me. Yeah, that's a good shot. I mean, this is probably one of the shots that I probably find definitely the more difficult. Yeah. Trying to play he's, with so much split and trying to get like a two yard rush. Yeah, he's made that look easy. It's definitely not an easy stroke to <laughs> no, play. You've got to be quite brave because you're, you're actually pointing the balls as though if you pl played a takeoff of that length, you'd be off the lawn. Yeah. So, um, but he's very used to playing these strokes, of course, because he's often having this leave yeah. over the years. I suppose that's one of the, like, the advantages of playing for so long and obviously, you know, whatever line of play he's choosing to take, he would have probably already played it a hundred times prior. Yeah. So, um, he's got choices here, of course, whether he tries to rush across to black or um, just leave leave black for the moment and go to blue. I think he's putting that up the line where he's going to be going over to the rush east the side. Blue black. Yeah, he's going to rush back down, so I think he'll be using uh, black here. I mean, it is either that or which is probably what he'll do, but there's always the option to send red straight to straight to hoop three and then get a rush across to black after hoop two. Absolutely, yeah. I suppose any time you're getting a sort of a rush that's in the opposite direction that you're running the hoop, it's significantly easier. And this route is better if you're likely to get behind black, but I think if you're not going to get behind it, there's not a lot of point in this, because it then just got a very long takeoff to blue. Yeah. Especially given, I mean, blue's a reasonable pioneer, but, and obviously Brock can play some progress strokes, so he's fine, but I suppose for some players who haven't got that same level of progress stroke, there's probably, there's a little bit of risk to that. Yeah. But yeah, he's in. Lovely position now. Very high odds of having his triple peel, the standard triple. Oh, and he's under rushed that, I would say, with that cut. He's really wanted to go beyond blue. And it would have been nice to rush that off the boundary and send it over towards hoop three. Um, Nothing to worry about there, just use that as his pivot and uh, could even push it beyond the hoop. It's his reception ball, I guess. Right, Ewan's back. It's restocked, so I'll uh, leave you to it. <laughs> Cheers, Pete. Cheers, guys. Nobody else wants to come in contact with you. With me? Yeah, they could with replace you me. or replacing you. They could replace Nobody me. was interested. Fancy that. It was one of the. It's probably like right, being a referee, right? It's a thankless job. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad, is it? <laughs> so Chris Grant, Chris Grant in the comment in the in the um, chat box has made a comment: the balls rebound rebound more on the quadways, um, which is a fair statement because I think again it's. I don't know if, whether it's because I oh know it's a bigger carrot or it's a firmer material or the square shaped carrot, but the quadways do tend to sit in the ground a lot firmer and therefore reject the balls harder. I think it's the square shaped carrot. Yeah, can't just any because that yeah yeah it means that the the hoop holes almost don't become wider when the when the ball yeah. Is into the, into yeah, the where the energy, where, where it's absorbing the energy, right? It's into, I suppose it's into a corner yeah. as opposed mm -hmm. to just like a, a circle. Yeah. Here we go then. We could be out of a job in half an hour. You know what? I wouldn't be complaining, to be honest. <laughs> as much as I've enjoyed this. 
Yeah, anyway, Chris Grant's made the comment that the stainless steel is more springy. Mm. Yeah, you the, you say that, but the ultra hoops that we were using early on in the tournament are stainless steel, and um, the ball's quite like yeah, just so much sticking to them and yeah. flopping through. So I'm not entirely sure it's, that's a huge factor. It's probably a combination of it, right? So it's probably the square carrot and, like I said, the materials. So it's a combination of all those things that make make the quadways what they are. And I suppose for anyone who's who's ever played, you know, with quadways and they're set and you know, very hard ground. Um, I'm sure they understand like what a spe what a special hoop they can be. You know, when you're trying to run a one yard hoop hard and you, and you, you know you end up on the back for your legs uh, and yeah, mm. opposite mm. boundary, right? Yeah. I, mean, I remember um, I think it was when I was playing in the New Zealand Open first round knockout, and I'm taking on like a two yard hoop two rebound like 12 yards east and give my opposition a one yard rush oh shin shivers down my spine <laughs> <laughs> listening to it <laughs> uh, I've never been uh, yeah, <coughs> never so mad about a hoop rejection in my life <laughs> yeah so here Rob's been able to rush it just in front but just to the side of the hoop which is where you want it so yeah. then gives him the ability to just tap it just in front of four back, giving himself a nice like three inch hoop or you know five inch hoop, run it gently. Yeah. Tap I don't want to put the commentator's curse on, but this looks pretty regulation to me. Yeah. I'd expect. Let me see that. I'd probably. His, on these lawns, standard TP, I'd give him in the 90s. Yeah. What, 90s percent chance? I mean, it basically just comes up with, comes out as is, is he going to make a silly error? And probably not. I, 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 mm. I think you've just you just put the commentator's curse on him. Um, again, that rebound. Oh dear. Again, there was this thing we talked about earlier. Like if you're peeling with any amount of pull, well, not any amount, like a little bit of pull, you can generally like judge. But mm. that looked like it hit left wire and right into left wire, right into right wire, and then sort of you know bounced out. Um, and so clearly, he's accounted for more pull than there actually was. I've got to say from. A foot and a half straight, I didn't expect that not to go through. No, neither. Do you feel one of the other things to take into consideration, if you're then playing with pull but also a bit of spin as well, like if you're playing like a quarter roll, yeah. then that has quite an impact as well. Um, and also something to take, you know, I suppose again, this isn't <clears throat> this isn't something that everyone's gonna have to think about or consider, but you know, like the milling on the ball, how old the balls are, that all has impact on like how springy they are, how they transfer energy and then also how much pull they impart. Um, so, you know, those are so not all balls are even even though the balls might be the same brand and type, they're not always going to play the same. Yeah. And have the same amount of pull. That's where I can't say much. I've missed lots of five yards. Yeah, we're just commenting on the fact that the game right in front of us, Nick Parrish versus Callum, in their crunch game now. Um, Nick just turned down a five yarder to take on an eight yarder, um, and yeah, as you can tell by our reaction, it was unsuccessful. Right here we go. So he's yeah, Rob sitting yeah, up on his way back to his peely. So he'll probably do very similar to what he did last time, the last last peel, and try and set it up so he can just peel it going straight. Um, give himself on a one yard rush to hoop six. Because like I talked about earlier, like <coughs> if he if he'd at least if he jawsed, if he jawsed four back, then he'd be rush peeling this right now and something yes. blew across. You know, and then and then it's done. It's done early. It's done before hoop five. You know, so <clears throat> you don't always have to just make the peel, but at least you know, getting it in the jaws, you know, is quite a positive thing. Um. 
Yeah, so here is Pop, yeah, Pop read out two yards away. So again, it gives them, like we talked earlier, you know, about people pioneers and stuff, it gives it. Um, yeah, here, here he's played not the, not the greatest shot I've seen Rob play. Um, he so. just overhits it, you needed to get that. It's not a good shot to be honest no. with you. He's put that, you're right, he's put that two, like, good two to three yards too far. Um, to be fair, he set up red and yellow, red and, sorry, red and blue nicely. Oh, that was nice. Yeah, he just, just skimmed it. Nudged it on the right, yeah. right. A nice, I mean, if he can just, you know, make his hoop, he doesn't need, desperately need a rush because of where he's put blue and red. As long as he ends up vaguely near red and he just sort of, you know, just he just, again, just taps it. You know, as it is, he's given himself a, well, what do you say, a one foot slightly angled hoop? It's ever so slightly angled, isn't it? it might be, it's not, no, no more than 10 degrees. It should be fine. Yeah, he's nose black as well. Hoop and yeah. Um. Big roll here. This is definitely a shot worth practicing if you ever want to be good at doing delayed TPs. Because you know, I don't know, I think early in the year when I was at the New Zealand Open, I completed, I don't know, I think it was like 13 TPs in a row. It was a shot I had to play a lot of, a lot of the time. So it's definitely a shot like worth being good at. Yeah. As sort of that, you know, plan B when you don't get a rush out of hoop five. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as it is, because of where Rob's put his balls, he's in a position where he can literally just dribble onto it. And that's yeah. perfect. And he just nudged it just a little bit closer. Yeah. One of the key parts of setting up for your um, delayed TPs, or TPs in general, is you don't want your PLE too close to the hoop in case you end up in that same position where you then have to dribble onto it. Yeah. And so this is sort of like a quite a perfect, you know, again, why it's important to be like quite critical and precise in where you put the balls because it doesn't mean that <coughs> Rob's now nudged it. You know, okay, he was yeah, two yards short, he's nudged it a little bit closer because of where he's put blue, he's now just playing it straight. He's left himself, he's prioritised the peel, he's left himself a slightly angled rush onto hoop six, but like percentages were, you know, because of because of all the precise play prior, when things went a little bit south, he's still been able to get the peel in a pretty reasonable rush to hoop six. Yeah, he's back on track here. Yeah. Going back over there after this, and yeah. same as last time. Hopefully, just don't get um, the blue in the way of when you're trying to put the two back pioneer out this time, right? <laughs> yeah, I can say that again. Yeah, so just make sure that he's put blue deep, so now he's the option to, to crash through the boundary. So he's putting no pressure on himself to even hit it to hit a controlled hoop. Yeah. Gosh. Straight through the boundary. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I think for any of those players out there who are like who are wanting to get a point where they are TPing consistently, it's one of the most it's probably the more important aspect is being very precise in where you put the ball. And you know, it's like every shot matters. So yeah, yeah. Are you putting your pioneer just the side, or are you putting it in front? Where are you putting your peel? Like how far away? Are you, you know, are you peeling straight, or are you peeling with angle? What well, where can you afford? And and then on top of that, playing a nice tight break playing a tight break so then it gives you the ability to have the, the choice of where you're going to put the balls. That's definitely something I lack, the uh, awareness to always think about where the, the front ball's going exactly yeah. rather yeah. than, you know, if you're putting a pioneer out from halfway across the lawn, not thinking, I actually need to, this needs to be there. Yeah. And it's like with anything, if you're just doing a takeoff, I'm sure most of you may agree that if you're playing a takeoff, when you want, if you aim to get it to land on a spot, yep. you often get it much closer to that spot than you would have gone if you just go, oh, yeah, I'll just get it to that general there. area. Yep. It's yeah. all about, I mean, the mind focuses a lot more, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. giving yourself a specific point on the long yep. time for, yeah, for sure. Rather than just going, oh, over there somebody's good, and then you end up with like a four yard, and <laughs> four yard yeah. okay, rush. <laughs> and then the precision just helps everything else out. Well, it's kind of this well, it comes down to having like controlled hoops. If you can, if you can, if you can run a hoop with control, it gives you rushes, which 
Yeah, like you said, to be fair, if you're playing a crow stroke from like a full-on crow stroke, you're probably hoping to get it like vaguely in the vicinity of a, a hoop or whatever. Yeah. Whereas if you get hoops, you know, um, rushes out of hoops, and all of a sudden, instead of playing like a 16-yard crow stroke, all of a sudden it's a seven-yard or it's a you know 10-yard. Yeah. Which you can be it's much more precise with. Has he got the space here? I, I, I didn't. Uh, he just hit the red a tiny bit too hard, didn't he? I, I, didn't give himself enough room. Yeah. I think I'd. Um, but again, he's focused on the yellow. That's yeah, the, that's the key. That's important. But I think you're, you're a little. You're out right there. Like blue's fine where it is, but you definitely want to. You want red a lot closer. Yeah. Oh. oh. That's fine. Yeah, it's just the side of the hoop. Yeah, I mean, red is five yards away from two back. So ideally, you, you are looking to rush something closer, so you can guarantee yourself a rush. Sure. He's probably yeah. He's nudged. So with this take on, this is definitely his longest shot of the game. But yeah. he's going to get the hoop and row case, so he can hit it fairly firm, can't he? I think he played it a little bit thicker just to nudge, make sure yeah. he nudged it in front. So then it gives him the option the to the hoop and row case. Yeah. The hoop, yeah, hoop and row case, nudge it a little bit closer. Then he can have some confidence and actually hit it at some speed. He probably wanted to hit that a little bit harder. Too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, he did. He did hit it a lot harder. It lost a lot of energy in the hoops. Yeah. I, I think it probably took quite a bit of wire. It's those quad ways, right? Yeah. Filthy, filthy things. Well, we did just see one here that was a ten degree hoop and didn't touch a wire and came out at ten degrees. So they can't be that filthy. But <laughs> you can't do anything about the ground. I think. It, yeah. All comes down to that hoop stroke, doesn't it? Yeah. You you can't help but think the fact we've had rain for what probably four or five hours now straight it's going to be changing the lawns drastically I mean there's no chance that the lawn lawn four is going to be rapid tomorrow morning no, I think you'd be right hopefully they can still get a cut in it but if it, if it continues to rain all day it's hard to see how they'll be able to cut the lawn yeah so we could be having very different conditions tomorrow to what we've had for the rest of the tournament to be fair it depends on what they use to cut the lawns though yeah um, here Rob's played Black is probably a lot deeper than what he'd like, so there's a good chance, yeah, he'll send blue to three back to make sure he's got a good pioneer, and then he's potentially looking to, he'll send red down, whether he rushes it down and then takes off to black or just plays a Krogo stroke from hoop, from two back. Um, but it looks like he's going to be trying to set up all the, all the, the skateboard and his PLE at Penalt with some sort of long shot. Even that shot's probably a bit. Yeah. That shot's short. That shot's it, quite on, short. On both balls. Yeah. He wanted probably an extra maybe two feet on yellow and then an extra two yards on blue. Just comment for a second on how impressive it would be if Rob got to the final and then you'd have Matthew and Rob who both played against each other in the GC World's final last year, getting into the AC one the next year, That's just quite, shows how, how good for the last are, two years, yeah. how far ahead they've been of everybody else in both codes. Yeah, it's just incredible. How, yeah. No, I'd agree with that statement, just how good they've been. Yeah, I, I think it's quite incredible, really. I think they both sort of, especially in GC, again, I didn't see a whole lot of the final, uh, well, I haven't watched a whole lot of the final, but I feel like Rob was very much a touch player, plays with yeah. like good tactics, very good positionally. Um, his shooting. He's in, yeah, he's ended up with a so yard long. It's a long, long hoop we need to. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yard long hoop for two back. Yeah, it's quite quite a critical shot for Rob. Yeah. But at least with the boundary there, it means you can shoot it quite firmly. Yeah, but as you said earlier, when he shoots at them hard, the technique starts to waver. Yeah. That took plenty of wire. Yeah. He's right though. He's, he's, he's he, fine. He he's absolutely to, fine. He wants he wanted the south the south rush that he he got the south rush he wanted. Yeah. Now it gives him a nicer angle to play the mm -hmm. Kogo Stroke over the black and potentially even get behind black and rush it closer to blue, so... Hopefully that settles any nerves or concerns he had before. Hopefully it's the shot he, yeah, the shot he um, needed, it's the sort of yeah. shot he needed to go well to make everything else easier. And also when you're just cruising like this, it, it helps you just switch on a bit as well. Yeah. He, may, he may have got in, was into a zone where he was just cruising and then, yeah, and then having a shot that you actually have to have a think about and reminding yourself this isn't all over. Let, let's keep pushing. Yeah, let's, let's just <laughs> reset the mindset. Yeah, no, I'd agree with that statement for sure. 
but yeah, going back to the GC and AC, yeah, I think they, you know, you, you can definitely be very good at GC and not have to hit the ball hard and be really good at power clearances. Yeah. And then you can be the complete opposite, you know, like likes of an Edmund, you know, mm -hmm. I suppose even an Essex, be able to hit long shots and be able to hit with a lot of power. So you Like yourself. Sometimes. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. I just don't always hit the ball straight. <laughs> um... But yeah, no, it's, uh, and I think that's sort of definitely a style that, because I suppose croquet has become beginning to be dominated by a young, it's, especially in New Zealand anyway, it's very much dominated by young people. They think all we have to do is hit the ball hard, and it's like, well, no, if you can posi if you can hit the ball hard and position well, mm -hmm. then you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be a top ten player in the world, you know. But if you do one and not the other, you can't put the ball in front of a hoop. No. Yeah, so he's, that, that's probably the shot he sort, of, he sort of needed, as well as the last one. Yeah. So he's managed to put in a good escape ball. So he wasn't putting it putting it into position close enough to really put it in a position to peel straight, but just putting it in that sort of wide area so then he can play with a little like, a little split half, you know, full roll or a quarter roll. Um, and then getting a rush out of this hoop would be even, is also very critical. <coughs> I think if he gets a rush out of this hoop, I think I'd give him, you know, I mean, he should finish the turn anyway, but I'd give him even more, a higher chance of finishing, of finishing this turn. I think, that, to be fair, that's probably good enough. I mean, it's pointing off towards... Know, He's well, cutting this quite yeah. a bit, isn't he? Yeah, but that's yeah, that's nice. more than good enough. That's an excellent shot. Yeah, so here he can get a rush on a red, put blue where he wants it, and peel going to black. This is where we need ball boys. Yeah. Yeah, I finally, I finally croquet had as much money as tennis did. <laughs> we would have ball boys. To be fair though, when you watch like the finals, like Egyptian finals. Yeah, they do, do have the ball boys there. Yeah. Like, the people running around collecting the ball. Yeah. Hopefully, um, so I suppose that's a shit. That's uh, that you know, for any of, for anyone who plays croquet, if they would have you know win lotto, yeah, please just please throw it all at croquet. We need all the money we can get. <laughs> <laughs> what are we gonna see here? This is a this is a big shot, isn't it? As long as he gets past the hoop, I mean, it's not the most critical shot, but I suppose, I mean, in, in a delay TP, you can always resort to a straight double. Yeah, he's, um, to be fair, he's played that This really is well. virtually exactly yeah. where he was last game. He's, he's played that really well. This is the exact same situation, I think. Um, that's what, and you know what, and in saying that, it's probably a mark of a good player, to be honest, that you always end up peeling from, you end up with your skateboard where you want it, you, you end up with your penalt pony where you want it, you end up peeling where you want it, where you want from. That's just the yes, carbon copy. Very... I mean, red's a yard shorter than it was in the previous game, but nothing, nothing to worry about. So that'd be absolutely fine. I think if anything, watching Rolf's way taught me that I should probably play that shot the way he does. Because normally I'd try, try and play that like a full roll and then I'd try and peel it by like a few feet, but yeah. just send it down makes sense. a two-footer with a bit of an angle mm -hmm. he'd hope he'd be hoping something close yeah, to this but he can run it off the boundary so it'll be fine there's no stress here yeah, maybe a little bit of nervousness just to you know sharp it sharp enough but no he's 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 on it now gone of the situation three hours ago where we wondered whether he was going to run a hoop again <laughs> he's back uh, he's back playing off. and i think winning winning this game you know assuming he finishes the turn this, winning in this way is probably a good big confidence boost for tomorrow, you know, playing Isak. He's also playing really well, you know, and showing that, yes, right now, I mean, obviously Rob's got the ability, but he's he's like, I've, I've got good enough current form that I can go out, you know, fifth turn TP, go around third turn, hit, you know, hit and go around third turn. Sure. You know, but I, I, you know, I'd say definitely a big confidence booster.
fairly standard position here. Yeah. Yeah, see, this is the other line. So you can either rush down and take off, or you... Would you have liked that a bit further? More room? Or is, he, is that... Yeah, probably, yeah, probably, probably an extra Half yard. Half a yard, a yard. Extra, yeah. An extra bit of room. But this, might, this might be three or four yards from Rover when he'd presumably be hoping for it to be a bit closer than that. Uh, I think this shot... Unless you rely on uh, no, you, the fact you're going to hit your four yarder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, in this shot you're prioritising red. Perfect. Oh no. Oh, it's we just hit a hill. hill. Yeah, but they're still within that's pretty. Like, yeah. two feet of the hoop. It'll be fine. Yeah, see, in that situation, because red's so critical, you put all your focus on red and go, wherever yellow ends up, I'm just hitting, yeah. I'm just hitting blue from there. And that was just perfect as well. Yeah. Perfectly weighted. Yeah. Something that actually <laughs> Incredible. Rob's, quite, Rob's quite good at, actually, <laughs> is he's very good at playing like these soft shots. And I suppose it's an advantage of actually playing with like a, uh, an Irish grip. Yeah, you more touch. So much more touch. More feel because you're playing with the palms of your hands rather yeah. than almost with your wrists and fingers. Yeah, yeah. so... Very similar to like a stat late, that's a benefit of a standard grip as well over a Solomon. I think anyone with a solid, if you're playing with a Solomon grip, you just don't have the same level of touch. You have so much more power, it's just not the same level of touch. That sounds like a individual insult to me. You're targeting me. Yeah, it's you specifically. <laughs> yeah. I immediately just thought, yes, right, you and plays with this Solomon grip, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rip him out for it. Uh, to be fair, I, I went to a patch of playing with like a, you know, I originally played standard and I stopped because of, you know, wrist pain. And then I found, you know, I played purely Solomon and then I sort of, I'll play my positional shots and Kroger strokes standard. Yeah, I'm the same. I yeah. play single ball stroke Solomon. Yeah. And about, then, uh, well, positional shots and GCs are uh, standard as well. Yeah, but yeah because you just, just helps so, so much more touch, right? So if you're going to play everything Solomon, that's sort of the, what you're giving up. Well, mm -hmm. sort of a trade-off, isn't it? You have a lot more power, a lot more effortless power, but just, and I suppose healthy wrists as well. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you just don't have the same level of touch. You just maybe overhit that a few mil. Maybe for action, you'll be right there. Just a wee he should be half ball rush to about a foot in front. <clears throat> I think he's done this a few times over the years. You know, you know what? I think you might be right there. I'm glad we didn't put the Conzet's curse on him that time. We've already done it, yeah, we've done it once, right? <laughs> he doesn't need any more curses. Are we going to see yellow through the hoop this turn, or is it going to be is it, is it going to be the jaws? What do you think? Yellow, probably jaws. I don't think he'll peel this too hard. No, it'll be firm, but not hard. Probably a nice relaxed pace. I think that was probably almost one of the, that was one of the mistakes that I feel like Tom when he did his dub, you know, straight rover. He I feel like he hit it too, like he almost yeah, thrashed perhaps. at it, like too well, the, hard, the ball, really yeah. firm. You know, he sort of thrashed at it. Whereas I think if he's a little bit more slow, a little bit more controlled. You say that he's hit it pretty hard. Red's nearly off the lawn. He's hit that quite. You know, you're right. He's hit that. <laughs> That's in the yard line. Yeah, <laughs> he's hit that very firmly. Yeah. That's not ideal, is it? You wouldn't want it that far, but I suppose you know you make sure of it. Oh yeah, yeah. you've got plenty of time to tidy it up. It'll be fine as long as he gets a rush out of the blue. Yeah. This is interesting. Yeah. So this is why you know even though he's still going to leave black in a place, he could potentially rush red into. It's like prioritising at rush on blue because that's what's important. Yeah, the Joe's playing a thick, a super thick one just to make sure he sends it miles away. Yeah. Yep. Rushed behind blue. Sorry, rush and blue to behind red. It's interesting because I do reckon this is one of my critical positions when it comes to finishing TPs. I feel like a lot of people, you know, I feel like, because you do all the peels right and then all of a sudden you're relaxed. And yeah. You're like, Switch on now. Yeah, yeah. So like I've just got to play these like easy shots. Next thing you know, you've. It's like, interesting that he just took, did that takeoff from. You know, I, I thought that obviously you've got more room and maybe that's just how he's comfortable playing them, but I certainly wouldn't have been going that way. Oh, you'd play it from the other side? Yeah, of course. Wouldn't you? Well, from that distance, I don't think it really matters. No, but no, it yeah, doesn't. But yeah, but I get what you mean. That's though. more natural, isn't it? Feels it? more comfortable, right? Yeah, pushing it away, natural. away from the boundary. So he's got a three-yard peg out. Um, 
for a place in the final. Do we know how many finals he's played in before? I don't even know, but obviously we know he's won five. Yeah. Trying to find out how many <laughs> how many finals Rob's played in. Probably been a few, to be honest. Yeah, I think he's. Um, I mean, he must have lost one. There's, there's no way he's won five, five out of five. Right. It'd be pretty impressive. Know, Michael Jordan was six at six, <laughs> Maybe so. somebody in, in the comments section can tell us how, how many he's won. Yeah. Anyway, that is game over here. Yeah. Well done, Rob. Yeah. Excellent um, one. Very impressive. The crowd's going to erupt here for an English finalist at Hurlingham. Yeah, that's probably the loudest sound of applause I've ever heard Absolutely. for a game, actually. And it's quite wet as well, so it's a, it's a low capacity crowd. but yeah, They were enthusiastic about it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, there weren't too many um, American flags being waved around during that clap. Yeah, it's funny there, actually. <laughs> Very funny. Right. Uh, but no, I suppose this is us signing off, so excellent win from Rob um, commiserations to Tom and I suppose we'll see you um, for, for the Essex final tomorrow the rematch yeah yeah rematch from the GC Worlds so uh, thank you very much everybody have a good evening and we'll see you tomorrow maybe if we're allowed <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if people have us back on but you know <laughs>